point. At some point, he'll join us. And you know, it's funny. We actually don't make a huge deal when someone arrives late. We've had Kyle join the show recently, and he wasn't able to make it right away because of some computer updates that kicked in out of nowhere on him. So when he joined, we just kind of like, Kyle, what do you think about that? And then he just jumped right in. <laughs> yep. And uh, and with Derek, we just kind of wait for him to insult whatever we're talking about. That's how we sure. know he's arrived. Sure. Um, trash <laughs> something. This is trash. trash. That's true. <laughs> well, we are in episode 66 of the Current Gen Podcast. My name is Tim, and I'm here with Dan and Dan. So Dan yeah. Freitas, of course, here with us every single week is one of our co-hosts. Dan Phillips rejoining us. I think last time you were with us was in the fall. And we I forget exactly what we talked about. If it was I, Game I, of the Year stuff? I, what, I, no, I think it was uh, the new console launching. New, so. that's right, the new console launches. That's right. That's right. Well, when you have both of the Dans on the show, you have the power of the double Ds. So, yes, sir. That's know, right. That's that's just immeasure, immense power. Just Everyone's a fan. <laughs> so uh, yes. Derek should be here at some point. Um, he said he's going to be running a little bit late, so he'll jump in whenever he gets here. So we'll talk about stuff we're playing, a few headlines. And then we're actually going to preview what, as a very nerdy gamer, going on 32 years now since I played my first video game. Is that right? Yeah, 32 years, I think. Aww. Um, <laughs> and I've been, th this time of year, once I learned what E3 was, probably around 2002, I maybe? I don't even remember when I did. I, I feel like it was right when I started in college, I kind of realized what this thing was. I remember mm. reading about it in magazines and seeing it in Nintendo Power just mentioned. Sure. But I didn't really know what it was and didn't know how big of a deal it was until the mid-2000s. And then, of course, in the 20-teens, it, 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 this was like Christmas in the summer. So Indeed. I love E3. I love uh, presentations. I even love when I don't love them because then I get to complain about them and talk about them. So <laughs> to me, Dude, it's always exciting. It's yeah. just as fun. I mean, like, and obviously it's like, oh yeah, Sony Pony bringing up the Xbox, uh, Xbox One anything. Um, but that <laughs> Xbox unveiling, Xbox One unveiling, yeah. that was, yeah, TV, TV, TV. Classic. Like that whole thing was just like. Uh, it, it was such a dumpster fire. I mean, it, it, it's all <laughs> entertainment. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Know, good, bad, ugly, or otherwise. It, yeah. It's just a lot of fun. So. But yeah, same both... with Sony, right? You know, with the PlayStation 3 unveiling, like you'll oh, get a second disastrous. job to buy this. Like... That was disastrous. You know, it's interesting. They both learned from that. And with the, with the reveals, official reveals last year, I guess dating back to. 2019's Game Awards when they unveiled the Xbox Series X for the first time, um, they just put together like a like a killer, like essentially graphics package, right. <laughs> and they just with some music in the background, zoom in on the machine, and don't have a person stand up there and say something stupid. Have it be very canned and planned out and edited, and yeah, they've they went a lot smarter. Uh, with their recent reveals. But before we get into video game talk, and we are going to preview all the shows coming up. We got E3, we got Summer Games Fest, and a few others. Um, wanted to quickly let you know that when your teenager gets his tonsils out, he is wow. miserable. <laughs> yeah. Miserable. I took my 14-year-old this week to get his tonsils out. It wasn't a very long procedure. We had to wait for We had to get there. They put his IV in, and then we just sat there for like two hours. So I wanted to be like, why did we come here so early? It's not It's not like it's packed out here. Like this, it was, this is probably going to make me sound like such an idiot, but what actually are tonsils? Because like, I don't think I've had mine removed, and I... I think I always thought it was the teeth. Like I always, when I was younger, I, I maybe thought it was the wisdom teeth, but obviously wisdom oh. teeth are, are wisdom teeth, so... You know, it's, it's back in your esophagus. Sure. And I'm actually not 100% sure that they do anything that... Whoa, I gotta echo. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> Are you <laughs> driving right now? <laughs> please All tell right. me... So I folks who are just listening, right please, now. I, was, I was attempting to be a doctor in the room and explain <laughs> what tonsils are and then Derek joined on his phone while driving and now we have an echo it's just great it's all going really please really tell good. me there all isn't right, a woman well, okay well I'll on your just lap. phone and tell you guys that I'm gonna be late that's it <laughs> you don't I'm have really a update you don't have a woman leaning over from the passenger seat leaning down no? this is the most <laughs> alert you've looked in two months of our recording <laughs> well <laughs> well he's driving stop, so stop talking about shit games bye all right, there you go. There's our there's our quick check in with Derek. He will be back in a little bit. We need to have him call it. We should actually have him call in as a guest every week. <laughs> just like that. Just, just, just have a thirty seconds. Talk to us about like one it. game, and then he can hang up when he's done. You know, yeah, just, until suddenly the 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 phone flips out of his hand and the car is like just freaking 
you know. True. Anyway, Three, the short two. version is it's it's the tonsils are in your throat and they don't really do much from what I've heard. But okay. if they get swollen or get infected, then they can really cause problems. It can gotcha. cause snoring issues, apnea issues, just general sore throats, make you prone to sinus infections. And he has all that. Uh, so. Um, so they got him removed, and they also removed his adenoids, which I'm not sure what those are. They, there's something in, also in the esophagus that con- or it connects to your nose. So not sure what all it is, but I do know that, I mean, he's he's a full-grown, he's 14-year-old, but he's like the size of a full-grown man. He's mm. over six feet tall. He's just under 200 pounds. Um, so he's a, he's a big fella. And he's and 14? He's 14, Jeez. yeah. All He'd right. be mad at me saying 200. He's, a, he's just under 190, I'm sure. sure. Um, he's, he's a big fella, and, and mm. so... And I've heard that typically little kids who get them out when they're young, their recovery is pretty quick. Like you eat a lot of ice cream for a couple of days and then you're, you're fine. But for adults, I've heard it's a pretty miserable experience because your body takes forever to heal for whatever reason. Sure. And so it's from this particular procedure. So he's getting more of the adult as far as uh, the adult uh, response time. So anyway, he's pretty miserable. Like he's, he, he was pretty brave the first day or so, but now we're on day three, no, four of recovery, three of recovery, something like that. And he just keeps walking around looking at us all sad, like, oh, it just still hurts, you know? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet it does. Yeah. You're anyway. like, you're a grown ass man. You're fine. <laughs> I know. I keep throwing medicine at him. I'm like, take more of the oxycodone. Just take it. Yeah, I'll, get know. addicted to it. See what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call your health insurance company. Ask for more. They'll deny you. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, he's he's pretty miserable. But I mean, I'm like, I even told him, I was like, you don't need to complain so much. Like, you literally have been given a green light to play video games and watch stuff all day. Right, right, like, right. So, and you know, we told him this, like, you're going back to your regular rules once you're recovered, but while you're in pain and recovering, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So I was like, stop complaining to us or I'll take that away. Yeah. I'll make you go like, out. If any, we're envious. <laughs> I'm envious. Right. Take my tonsils. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to do anything. Um, yeah. Now, it is. it does suck because, you know, he can't have any kind of really any food that's got a crunch to it or that actually requires chewing. He can only eat really soft pasta and oatmeal and pudding and all that kind of stuff. It can only be the, and he's gone through, I think two and a half quarts of ice cream. I mean, he's gone. He's, yeah. He's cooking through the ice cream, man. Yeah. But, well, you know, he's a it, growing young man. He's a growing young man. He's only 14. He played football for the first time this spring and, um, he's the that. oldest and by far the biggest of all of our kids, and he's not used to getting tossed around like he was on the football. Because there's other kids that are his size and bigger mm-hmm. that are because they had him play an offensive tackle, and yeah, that was a bit of a. So it, 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 is he not into it? Because I remember you mentioning he kind of like wasn't sure if he was feeling yeah, it. He's, but... he's just he's not really passionate about it. He likes okay. to be acknowledged as being excellent at something. Mm. This is classic teenager, by the way. This is not just him, Dan. You're a parent of a teenager. Absolutely. They love the recognition for the excellence of something, but it takes a special motivation for them to really want to put the work in. So yep. that's why when you see a teenager who's excelling at something, like you see some of these teenagers who are getting recruited by colleges already at this age, I mean, they they, they want it, and they're working hard, and that's all mm. they're doing. And so, no, yeah. we have not. We have yet to have any universities knocking on our door. That's all. I'm sure. Saying. <laughs> but I mean, that's fine. If he's not passionate about it, then he's not passionate about it. I, yeah, you so, got to me. 100%. It is what it is, you know? 100%. I think yeah. he's going to end up going into the same line of work that I do with uh, web design and stuff like that because he's oh, okay. still like that. So nice. anyway, all right. Sorry, we went off on a rabbit trail there. I have not had my tonsils out either. Dan Phillips, have you had your tonsils taken out when you were younger? Yeah, probably like seven or eight. And like you said, pretty quick ret- recovery time. I mean, a few days eating ice cream, I was fine. Hmm. But, yep, my kid never had hers out. A lot of uh, tonsil issues with her over the years, but they're just uh, more hesitant Hmm. to remove them anymore unless they have, like, uh, real serious issues with them or something. They just don't do it like they used to. Interesting. Well, in the ear, nose, and throat specialist, we learned this. They're really hesitant to officially state that this is something they recommend, like they need to require it. Mm -hmm. I guess it's really expensive and insurance really gets ticked off. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so they, I, well, they I think optimal. back in the like 80s and 90s, you know, that was just the quick fix. Everybody just removed the tonsils and, uh, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and the, like that probably cost of everything just went up and they're a little more uh, gun shy with that these days. My belly hurts. Get those tonsils out of there. Yeah. Yep. We call, them, we call them ENTs, Tim, in the insurance world. OK, you don't have to say ear, nose, throat. Just say ENT. That's right. You're in. I forgot you're on the insurance side of things. You're the, you're the 
here. Yeah, I'm the, I'm, I'm the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Evil insurance agent. Honestly, dude, the entire system is just ridiculous. It's stupid. The whole thing is stupid. Yeah. Yep. It, but I mean, and I don't, I mean, yeah, it's it's just dumb. You know what's interesting? And I I only know this because we have now adopted from foster care, but from if a kid comes through the foster care system, they're covered by Medicaid for life. Oh, really? Oh. Like even even after they're placed in a home and even after oh. they're adopted full like fully adopted they still have Medicaid oh well, I shouldn't say for life that was an overstatement till they're eighteen sure mm-hmm. okay but so I mean that's for a, as long that's as a long time. yeah so yeah. we don't have to worry about their insurance until you know until they're wrapping up that's, high school that's nice that's, kinda, that's yeah that's, yep so haven't had to worry about it with them um, anyway all right so I digress let's bring it back oh by the way speaking of bad guy that talk really- is over. I'm rewatching Breaking Bad. That yes. show is just the best, man. This is the first time I've actually watched it again because I've watched it all the way through several years ago, and that was it. I was like, that was one of the mm-hmm. best things ever. Don't need to rewatch it. Like I'm just gonna let it sit just like that. But then out of the blue, it was just sitting there on my Netflix recommendation list again, and I was like, all right. So I am cruising through Breaking Bad, and I am loving it. Where are you at now? I'm in halfway through season four. So I'm oh wow. Close okay. to the end. See, I, I did the same thing where I watched, uh, you know, start to finish and loved it. One of my all time favorite uh, shows ever. Um, but yeah, recently just uh, looking for something to watch uh, kind of in the background or whatever. We started watching uh, Breaking Bad over again. So this is my first rewatch. We're about in season two somewhere. And it's just uh, it, it's incredible going back to the beginning, knowing everything that, you know, and um, it's yep. Just such a good show. I can't wait for Gus to show up. I'm... I know, dude. That's I'm right in the thick of that storyline. It's actually kind of towards oh. the back half of that storyline, but man, yep. so good. I just had the first episode where Bill Burr shows up. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I forget. That. I forgot that. that he was in that until he mentioned it on the Bill Burr podcast at some uh-huh. point. I was like, oh yeah, and then I like I watched a clip of it. I was like, man, like he actually is does decent in that. And yeah, yep, absolutely. A few years ago, you know. How many <laughs> seasons is that show right? again? What's I that? think it's how many seasons? seasons? Or is, is it, it five? Damn, I thought it was. I thought it was more. Okay. They're long seasons, though, aren't they? There's five seasons of that, and then I believe they did four seasons of Better Call Saul. Which, if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend it. For a, a spinoff show, uh, they did incredible. I didn't have horribly high expectations for it, just knowing yeah. the the character from Breaking Bad. But, um, yeah, they crushed it with that. I I love that show almost well, as much as I do Breaking Bad. Same, same, and it's much less. Um, kind of heavy like you watch breaking yep. bad and okay. even though it's got a ton of humor by the way my second time through i'm laughing a lot more realizing how many jokes they actually do work in a lot of dark humor mm-hmm. um and by the way the directors are all like there's a there's a part in season four where they're mopping up the floor that's covered in blood they're, they're cleaning up after a, a death mm. and so they're mopping up all the blood on the floor and it shows you know zooms in on them pushing the <laughs> the blood towards the drain and then it cuts to them at a restaurant, and some guy is like smothering his fry and ketchup, like, wow. and it zooms <laughs> yep. in real close on it. They do that kind of stuff all the time, man. And now this time around, it's making me laugh because I'm like, they yeah. have such dark humor, and I and I really dig it. But Better Call Saul is much more. It still has some darkness to it for sure, but it's much more lighthearted comparatively, yeah. you know. Um, there's also good. there's also the movie, which actually that's why I I want to rewatch it because you guys just reminded me. Oh, maybe, the El Camino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Because that honestly, takes place that, right after, right? Yeah, I heard it's good. And, and, no, it it is really good. It's been me and my wife's watch list honestly since it came out, and just never decided to, to you know jump off and watch it. And yep. eventually, you know, one weekend we decided, ah, let's just do it. We've been putting this off forever, and um. I really wish it would have been closer to when I watched the the show, but it yeah. does give you enough of kind of where everything left off that uh, yeah. still very impactful. Um, I love Jesse as a character, so mm-hmm. it, it it was like I I don't know I I thought it was a real nice little kind of uh, cherry on the the cake. It was perfect. yeah I do I do want to watch that. It's gonna I mean I'm flying through the show, so I'm gonna watch all this mm-hmm. and then I'll watch El Camino. But then yep. I do want to go back back and rewatch Better Call Saul as well. Um, mm-hmm. just, I'd like I love to watch that, that again. World. And I, I was hoping they would come out with another season. I don't know if they're done with that show or if there's another season coming. Sure, I want to say I I what? swear there is. I thought like, there because was another of the one pandemic. in the works, but yeah. and, and honestly, the the movie isn't perfect and has plenty of flaws. But 
just how it kind of wraps it up and puts a bow on it. Like that's really what I wanted. And I, I liked how uh, breaking bad ended. Um, you know, it's honestly just kind of what I wanted by the end of that show. And there's not a lot of, you know, shows that are, are that powerful um, yeah. when you get to the end of it that you're really satisfied with that conclusion. But uh, yeah. I, I didn't see Breaking Bad ending in any other way than it did. It um it, it definitely was way more satisfying overall, like even though it's like, oh, well, like there's aspects about it, uh, about, you know, the ending. That's definitely a bummer. Um, yes. But it, it, it does feel satisfying because it makes sense as opposed to the ending of Dexter. So, uh, <laughs> and and that is honestly on my watch list. I've heard such crap Dexter? about Dude, that. Dude, if you um, pretend first, like Dexter like, two is or three seasons, are, are pretend it. like it's four seasons long. Yeah, and then, four seasons and long. Then, yeah, the yeah, fourth four yeah, four. season. Treat it like the series finale, and you'll be like, you'll be left wanting more. And it will be very poetic the way they wrap things <laughs> up. It's just, it's, it's tragic and perfect. But and then, they, then I hear it comes back and it just kind of falls apart. And, and that doesn't mean that there's no good episodes after that. There are right. oh, yeah. good storylines. Season seven, I, but... I want to say it's season seven that actually is pretty good as well. I don't know well, if it's and Sarah there is Chuck. I forget her, the actress's name, but the girl from Chuck. Do you ever watch the show Chuck? Um, she she oh, joins that yeah, as yeah, a love the interest. Actress, and I right? yeah, I I liked her character, and you know, I, I liked some of the other pieces they added later. It's just looking back on it now that I see how they wrapped it up. I'm like, you know, we didn't need four full seasons of this it could have ended at season four and been a cla- like an all-time classic and, but and now that's a show they're doing another season of yeah, or yeah. a movie or something it's, um, a, season, yeah, it's a season yeah another season of it so it, yeah you know um better call saul has five seasons out now the fifth season aired last year oh, okay. and then their planned final sixth season got delayed on its filming they're expecting it to premiere next okay. winter, like january 22 probably Perfect. Stupid um, pandemic. Sixth and final season. So yeah, I'll. Pro- I might actually wait to do Better Call Saul to the fall. That way, it, it's that way lot. you can just go right through it. Yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah, great shows. Love. I just. I love the world they created there. It's really, really good. Um, and it's very funny. Surprisingly funny. I mean, it's also depressing. But oh it's yeah, very, it's yeah, it's very. Yeah, very my fun. wife. And, um. My wife does not like the show. Because yeah. it's one of those shows where there's not like anybody to like like to kind of root for, except for like maybe Jesse. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. But I mean, obviously he does some. I mean, technically they are doing crappy. They, they all do questionable things. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I think he's got that's the most kind of... consistent conscience that I. Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. That I agree with that. Watch. Walter kind of gets a little bit all over the place at times, but I, I think <laughs> the fact that they're doing split personality, he goes into yeah. like gangster mode with his hat on or like there's a part where there's a i I forget which season it is it might be the season you're watching now but there's a part where he gets good health news and he kind of doesn't want it and they're having a party to celebrate him and he's depressed and he's making his 15 year old take a bunch of shots like it's Mm -hmm. yeah 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 yeah. yep yeah but so well done like the guy who plays hank is such a good actor like i'm I'm appreciating it even more now because this show is what is it probably 15 years old maybe at least 10 years old Yes. Yeah, it's it's yeah. at least ten probably at, at this yeah. point. But it might, have, um, it might have launched in like the mid two thousand, maybe two thousand eight or so it started. But anyway, um, you know, you you expect to go back to some of these shows and see it. Ah, look how dated it is. The only thing that's dated really are the phones, mm-hmm. and I guess some of the vehicles maybe. But otherwise, sure. it it's so good. Production yeah. quality, acting, writing, so mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Let's get to some video games that you guys are playing right now. We'll start with our guest, Dan, just in case we don't have time to get through everything that we're playing. But Dan, what are you gaming these days? I know you've got you've got all the systems. You've got a pretty good PC, right? No, I don't have a PC. That's the one thing I'm lacking. Yep. You got all the screens, though. You got all the I screens. I got all the <laughs> screens. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I make use of it. I have plenty of access to video games. So um, I've been playing a lot of different stuff. So I'll just try to be quick about it. Um, got Returnal when that came out in PS5. I was kind of standoffish on it at first and wasn't really planning on picking it up. Um, the roguelite stuff is it's not my kind of genre i like to feel a little more progression and story and um i've enjoyed things like uh dead cells a lot um rogue legacy um you know there there are things i enjoy about it but i usually hit a wall you know one two bosses in maybe three um you know i kind of feel like i've got the experience i never feel like i'm going to get good enough to to get all the way through those games and and i usually fall off at some point 
So that was kind of my hesitancy with that. But um, just after seeing a lot of the reviews and a lot of people talking about the Metroid, like uh, Metroid Prime t- type vibe that it had, um, I just I just couldn't. Uh, hold off on it anymore so i had to check it out for myself and honestly um, i was playing games with one of my friends one night and he did a screen share of it so and gave me control so i could actually start playing Ah. returnal on his system um so that's kind of how i first checked it out and there's lag and and stuff like that so i mean it wasn't perfect but i definitely got an idea for what the gameplay felt like and Mm -hmm. running through the rooms and i was like okay i i think i can dig this um Got into it the first week or two, maybe. I mean, it was probably just the first week I was really heavy into it. Beat the first boss pretty quickly. Um, that mm-hmm. didn't take me much problem at all. Got to the second boss really quickly. And that's kind of where um, I've hiccuped since then. Um, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I did, I, I've only fought the second boss twice at this point. Um, and the thing was that, you know, I got to him pretty easily, good loadout and everything. And then as I'm trying to go back through the first biome and, you know, there's a shortcut, go right to the second biome, but I keep pushing myself that I want to get a better gun. I want better upgrades and I keep exploring more and I'm dying a lot more now in the first biome than I ever did. This is, this is what I tried to explain to my friend, Brandon, because like he's, I I don't think he's still beating it. And like, we were like, kind of like, we were like uh, challenging each other. We were going back and forth because he was actually like a little bit ahead of me at the time. But then I actually one night just like I straight up beat it. Um, so I got like way further ahead than he did. But like everyone seems to like be when you finish the boss, then you basically don't have to fight that boss anymore. You can kind of just skip over to the next biome. You you have to go through all the biomes again because yep. you, you want to accumulate all the power ups items the, the, the only thing is that after you beat that first boss those biomes get tougher there's, there's sure there's harder enemy design yeah. in there and i feel like more is getting thrown my way i think it's the that... rng too i think it's the rng it is yep. it is and i i do know that they, they'll throw you in a room that i wish i had more of a heads up like hey there's a challenge room where if you want a potentially great reward go into this really tough room yep and, too. So I yeah, don't so, mind if I know that that's there. Maybe I want to do that because some of those rooms, if I'm up for it, are a lot of fun and very yeah. satisfying if you can survive it. But I, sometimes I just want to get back to like that second boss took me mm-hmm. probably five or six tries until I really, truly figured out his patterns. It was his third phase that got me. The first mm-hmm. two phases, I feel like yeah, I, no, I, I picked yeah. up on those no problem. And then the third phase, the way he jumps and slams at you, I was like, this guy is crushing me and I can't <laughs> get him to stop. And, and, yeah. and that's my problem. The first two, there are the two times that I fought him. I mean, the first two phases are no problem. And then that fir- third phase comes and he just destroys me. And it, it's like, I can't get a handle on it. Um, and, and got, you know, it's just the fun. fact, and, and, and I or... just need to keep getting back to him. And I got shortcuts to get there, but I feel yeah. that if I take advantage of those too much, I'm going to be under leveled, underpowered right. by the time exactly. I get there. And there's just not enough progression from one run to the next to where I feel like I got to do everything over again. It's great. I had, I still have a sword, but I, yep. you know, and it, it is nice when you go to that second biome right away, you get weapon proficiency. So then when you find a, a weapon in that second biome, you know, it gives you like five weapon proficiency levels right away, just for getting there yep. and you can get a weapon, good weapon. So, I mean, even if you don't go through the whole biomes, I think that might be a better strategy for me. Cause right now I just keep getting hung up and hung up and hung up in the, in the first biome and I'm not getting back and, or feeling like I'm making any progress. So, well, you can actually skip the second one altogether once you beat that boss and get to the third one you don't even have to touch the second biome if you don't want i'm learning that sometimes that works great and i arrive in the third biome i get an item that's helpful i get my proficiency bumped up you know two biomes worth Mm -hmm. and i pick up a gun right away and everything's pretty good and i can have a pretty good run other times it just didn't randomly give me a treasure chest with a gun and so i'm running through most of the third biome with my level one proficiency gun yeah, barely you surviving you gotta go yep. through each by throw gotta come through you gotta yep. and, I, and i i try to i just i'm not playing it enough to where yeah, i'm as proficient in the game and i, I not... feel like if i really committed to it and and did those yeah. runs like dan's describing yeah. um that that's how i want to do it and you know you like the vibe now, of it though do you like the look and feel do oh you like i like the vibe, I like the, vibe the feel yeah. the gameplay and all that and like when i get into it get a rhythm I have a yeah. good time with it and I'll play for 30, 45 minutes and have a good run. Might not even get out of the first biome and I'm, I enjoyed it, but then I'm back at the beginning of the game and, and that's kind of where I'm done. So yeah. I hop in here and there, um, you know, again, I'm, I've never finished a roguelike. I don't know if this is going to be the one that I push over the edge, but um, I'm happy. I got it. I, I, 
you know, for 70 bucks, uh, maybe I feel like I could have waited, but it, it was just the appeal of it. I really wanted to get on cool it. uses so. of the controller, right? With like the oh, way you the, pull the, the triggers in? No, the controller is cool, and it took me a little while for that half pull, full pull on the left trigger, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. totally a fan of that. I think it does some really fun stuff. Um, the visuals look great. It runs super smooth, um, and I, I, I've always been a big fan of the bullet hell type shooters so um it you know it really speaks to me and and it does have that metroid prime deal so i'm i'm happy with it i've been having fun with that but um when resident evil 8 came out that was really the game i was looking forward to this year and i i you know once that game came out that's all i played and i played that through in a couple weeks you know about 11 hours from my first playthrough and um just completely in love with it i it, it was tense and um, the whole way through, but I, I never felt to where it was like that overwhelming dread. Like sometimes they right. felt in, in except Resident for that Evil's, one house, except for yes, that, second that, location. that one house. And I'm <laughs> glad that it was short because like <laughs> my skin was crawling and like yeah. hair standing on edge. Like yeah. I wanted the F out of that. Yeah. House. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's crazy. You know, Cause the first half of that house, I was like, this is kind of creepy, but it's not that well, bad. I had kind of heard warnings that it gets bad. Yeah. yeah. And then it gets real bad real fast. And I was like, yep. I no, hate and, and when it gets bad and the lights go out, like yeah. I was like, oh my God, let me out of here. And I, I knew something was coming. Like the, Dude, the first big... part of that, I was like, I, the tension's building because like nothing's happening. I'm waiting for it around every corner. And eventually when it happened, like it really got me. So um, I'm, happy, I'm happy it didn't <laughs> last longer than it did. But like that was, I'm a big Resident I Evil mean, fan. That, that was one of the most fun Resident Evil games I played game in a of long the year. Time. What, and, what, cre- what basements aren't creepy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what, no. What basements aren't creepy? That's true. They, they always are a little bit. So that was <laughs> that was a lot of fun for me. Game looked great, played great. I was so impressed that a game launched, released, and was just finished, and you play it all the way through and never yeah. crashed, never ran any bugs. It was just done. No big day one patch. So... It, it was a it was a pleasure to play. So I was happy to run through it. You know, got through it pretty quick. Started a second playthrough, um, but then uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition came out. I figured I needed to get on that bandwagon. I have played uh, the first Mass Effect. I played that through the backwards compatibility on Xbox One, mm-hmm. and it was fine. Um, but you know, I was always late to the Mass Effect games, and and I never really got on board with them. Big fan of Kotor. Um, is just Mass Effect for whatever reason. When those games released, um, I never played the first one. When the second, third came out, I I just you know I I heard all the hype, but it just wasn't there for me. So yeah. I never really got into those games, and um, I figured I'd give it a shot. You know, when it was backwards compatible, and and I kind of rushed through the first one. Um, you know, did the whole story, finished the game, but. I didn't really play it like the RPG it, it deserves to be played as. Um, I didn't talk to a lot of people. I didn't really get into the lore. I just went from one main mission to the next. And talking to my friends after I finished it, I, I missed a lot in that game. Uh, and I, I really yeah, for sure. experienced what Mass Effect was. So I was always kind of hesitant to start Mass Effect 2 because... Do I really want to take this character over? Um, I'm not sure this is, you know, and I've, and that's kind of where I was hung up. I was waiting for a, a remaster or remake or something of that. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity. So I jumped back in. I was excited for this, um, honestly. I mean, I liked what I played of, of the Mass Effect on the backwards compatibility. It's just, I, I, you know, every now and then I like to take a game out of my backlog and go, I've always wished I would have played you and, and just kind of play through it. And I, I just really feel I rush that one. So I'm taking my time with it now. And yep. I'm probably about 10 hours in and I barely done any, any main story missions. Yeah. It's all Dude, I, it, you're, everything you're saying. It's exactly what I'm doing, but with a different game. And that's Red Dead Redemption two. Oh, I played that game way too quickly. Cause I wanted to see the story. And I, I was like, let me try some hunting here. Let me try a little fish. Let me just try some of the side stuff. But I was plowing through the story and then I wanted to get to the end. I tried Red Dead online for like an hour and I was like, eh, not my thing. And then I moved on. And, I think it was because that year was crazy and all these games had built up. 2018 was a pretty crazy year uh, for gaming. I think I went to Assassin's Creed Odyssey after that. I was trying, there's all these big open world games. There was Spider Man came out that year. There was a lot of stuff. And I I, kind of was the same way um, when that year came out. And I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. So I really wanted to play Odyssey. It was also way too big of a game. Right, obviously. Um, But when Red Dead Redemption came out, I was like, this is the game I need to play. And, you know, I was a big fan of the first Red Dead. 
Dead Redemption. Same. So I really wanted to get into it, and I got into it with the mindset that I'm going to plow through this game. I'm just going to get it done so I can get on to Assassin's next Creed. Next mission, next mission, and, next mission. Yep, and I got through, like, the prologue, and I, I was like, this game's not going to work that way. And it was just the natural pacing of the game, and I hated it at first. <laughs> that, I was like, this game is so So did Derek, slow. I think. Yeah. so bogged down everything takes forever i was like the you know it just wasn't wasn't what i was expecting um, yeah. more or less so it wants you to I, play it the way it wants yep. you to play and, it. and that's yeah. exactly what i realized so i kind of changed my mindset i said hey if if i'm gonna play this i i gotta play it how it wants me to play like a I'm cowboy like, like like a cowboy like i i'm in the 1700s or 1800s whatever it is like this mm-hmm. is gonna take a while and yep. once i got into that mindset and i i got into hunting um all the side quests and i would play an hour and a half in that game and i would do barely anything yeah you man. know yep. and, and and i just figured this is going to be my comfort food for a while and and when i get into yep. games like that whether it's witcher assassin's creed i just figure this is a big massive game i don't care if i play it for two three months and that you know this is you know i don't get a ton of gaming time um maybe i spend 10 hours gaming a week you know sometimes i get a, a little bit more but you know a, a busy guy and um i work a lot and and family and, and things of that 10 hours i feel is pretty good yeah and if i'm going to dedicate myself to that an 80 hour game takes a while it'll take yeah. a couple months. yeah yeah and yeah. um and that's okay, but I, I've the older I've got, you know, I, I'm like, this is my hobby. This is what I enjoy. I want right. to make sure that those ten hours that I'm putting into this, I do actually enjoy it. So, when I when I got in that mindset with Red Dead, and I just slowed down and played it at the game's pace, um, I was in awe of of what yeah. that game did. And and if you can really adapt to it and play it that way, it's um it's the best way to experience. And when I slowed yeah, down, I, I played Assassin's Creed that way, and I played The Witcher Three that way. Those were the the best times I've had with with those games, and really enjoyed my gaming hours. So See, I, it's interesting I, you're saying all this stuff because I, in 2018, God of War was my pick at the end of the year for my favorite game that year, and it was a tough decision. Like yeah, the, oh, the last yeah. two years yeah. haven't been quite as difficult. They've been a little bit easier for me to pick my favorite. Not totally easy, but pretty, a little easier. Right. But 2017 and 2018 were both really tough for me to pick my favorites because there were so many just incredible games, and. God of War won it for me then. Well, I've since replayed all three of them, not all the way through. I've played a mm-hmm. few hours of God of War on the PS5, and I was really enjoying it. Like the, I still love that game. Spider-Man, same thing. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I played all the DLC and kind of re-explored that world a little bit. Love it. It's fantastic. I think if we were to revisit that discussion, it'd be an interesting one to have, because I now that I've replayed a bunch of those, and it's all, it's all had time to kind of settle, and maybe it's recency bias now that i am super into red dead 2 on my pc right now and it's <laughs> the most beautiful thing i've ever I, seen i gotta imagine that game is just gorgeous on i've I never seen anything it. like it like it's oh. blowing my mind and so yep. um and so maybe it's recency bias it could be that but now i'm going like how was this not my game of the year no matter what else came out like it's just well, i have that feeling while i'm playing God, 2018 it, so. god of war was a fairly long game so uh, yeah. you would imagine if you'd if yeah. you'd play that front to back right now then you'd be like oh man this maybe. this is amazing you know like, and, and i i really took my right. time you know with god of war and spider-man yeah. that year i i didn't rush through any of those games and it yeah. it was a tough year and red dead redemption for what it was doing i loved it but just um you know that year how i was feeling was was you know the video gamey aspect of it yeah. like you know god of war and spider-man were co- kind of more my video game where it was just like um um, you know, immediate fun, you, you, you know, you had that immediate return and it was just this constant fast cycle of it where Red Dead was a, a slower burn of it. And maybe well, what I'm doing with this playthrough that I didn't do the first time is all the little optional stuff where you can go yep. fishing with different um, people that are in your gang and mm-hmm. or you can or just actually just exploring certain towns. And like if you take time to just walk around without just speeding to the store you need to get to and getting out of there, like I've. I watched a guy as he was bragging to his friends about his new gun he just got in the mail and he was waving it around, showing it off, and he shoots himself <laughs> in the leg. And then all his friends are laughing at him while he limps off to the doctor's office and has a smoke. Like it's like little moments like that. I just no, and, watched and, it all unfold. Yeah, and no, it's and it's so flush cool. with it. And like honestly, I mean, the fishing and the hunting, I love doing that stuff. I mean, I'd spend 30 minutes hunting one animal and yeah. 
it, it's just, you know, that stuff was super rewarding. And I, I think my mindset today is maybe a little bit different. And because I gave the edge to like uh, Spider-Man got a war and it ended up being got a war too um, for me that year. But, uh, but definitely I think Red Dead, you know, for, for what it does, um, it, it definitely does something special. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I interrupted and I'll throw this to either one of you. Anything else of note that you're playing that you want to highlight before we jump into some headlines? I mean, I, I listed a couple things, but it's funny because I so I listed um, that I completed uh, uh, the A Realm Reborn story arc of Final Fantasy XIV Online. Okay, I I, I didn't. <laughs> oh, you thought you did? No, you did. I, I thought I did. Yeah, because like so, so like I said last time, I'm trying to get to the point where I can unlock the Dark Knight class, and I know that's in the first new city that you get to in the second expansion, Heaven's Word. Um, I'm not in Heaven's Word yet, apparently, because I haven't gotten to that new city. So I started Googling around. I'm like, why? I'm a couple hours into Heaven's Word. Like, when do I get to the city? And then I realized that I'm still, I'm still like 80 to 100 quests away from Heaven's Word. Like, I, I don't know if it was like some in between thing that they, um, they released with Realm Reborn, or if it actually was packaged with a Realm Reborn, but, uh, where I finished, where I thought I finished the game, like it was this big climactic moment. I fought Ultima Weapon, which is like one of the big bads in this, in like mm-hmm. usually like a side enemy, but like yep. one of the tougher enemies in, in a Final Fantasy when they throw it in there. Um, it, it, I just, it was this whole culmination. It was this big epic moment. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And, and I finished that moment and I, I thought I finished Realm Reborn. So I was like, oh, sweet. Now I'm, I'm finally going to the first expansion. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm not there yet. Not so. even close. No, I'm, st- I'm still probably like three weeks away worth of gameplay. So you know, the, the developers <laughs> who make these MMOs, whether it's Star Wars Old Republic, which is the one that I've probably put the most hours into, or back in the day with WoW, and I know WoW's still cooking, um, EverQuest mm. to Final Fantasy XIV, like they don't get enough credit for the amount oh, of yeah. content they keep creating for this stuff. Yeah. So much to do. So Dude. much to do. And especially with 14. Four, 14 is so crazy interesting because of like the whole aspect of them releasing the game initially it being a huge failure because it just it really just wasn't a finished product and it was so clunky and just things were missing and things were wonky um for them to actually take the lore of that game and wrap it into sort of the lore of a realm reborn which literally means a realm like when you actually play it you understand that that's a game remade yeah exactly but like i watched i I was um watching a a video on youtube it's nine years old it's somebody Mm -hmm. uploaded the video of the last moments of uh the 1.0 version yeah so it's like it's the person he's hanging around with i'm guessing his friends that they're, they're all just like in a field and yeah. they're running through the the music is there's no music it's dead it's super creepy but like in the distance you can hear the music from the trailer when they kind of unveil that it's gonna be shifting to like the 2.0 like uh-huh. you can hear it in the distance like the woman singing but like other than that it's just super quiet and eerie and they're walking through the open fields and you so they see they actually put together an experience for that transition yeah point like too. you see because in so in the trailer it shows like bahamut shows up but like he's in this like glowy giant sphere in the sky and in the game you when you're looking up you see that sphere it's just yeah. kind of like glowing and pulsating like because that's the moment where the realm like you know bahamut shows up and and shit hits the fan so with, speaking of shit hitting the fan derek derek fan. has rejoined <laughs> still using his phone yeah that's good that'll be good audio for our podcast listeners that'll be yeah. that'll be great i'm glad hey, you... by the way dan real quick you mentioned uh since you're playing 14 don't know if you'll be interested in this but i do think you like stardew valley and mm. you like mmos and you like breath of the wild well those combination of games are all being referenced for this new game that's called Palia, Palia or Palia, Palia? that's yeah, yeah, yeah. out of uh, Singularity 6. They just put out a trailer for this this week. If you guys haven't mm. seen it, go check it out. It looks really interesting where you yeah. have that whole like adventure exploration combined with It looks um it looks really chill. I like the the look and and kind of maybe what they'll do with it, but it's a dep- it depends on how like sort of community based it is. Yeah, like can you play single player is my big question. Well, sure. So, like, or well, that's what it, that's that's so that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm wondering if it's the opposite. It's to me, it actually, from what I've heard, it seems like it's definitely going to be more like focused on like your land, 
and people can kind of come in and out, but like, I don't know if you'll be able to like say have neighbors, so to speak. Like if you pick a plot of land and then like, if you're playing with a friend, if they can have the plot of land right next to you and you guys can kind of just be like, Hey neighbor, like what's up? So, you know. All right. Well, let me mention a couple I'm playing real quick before we jump into some headlines. Um, I did try out the no man's sky update, which is funny. I was looking back at some of the awards and I guess you can call them disses that we gave out to games in years past in 2016, it was like unanimous that the most disappointing game of the year was No Man's Sky. I think it was 2016, right? Uh, 2017? It was somewhere in that range. I don't remember. Um, but for all the promise, most people, myself included, felt like it just wasn't quite delivering what we thought it was going to deliver and kind of wrote this game off. But to their great credit, I know people don't believe this, but they've been adding so much to that game and improving it. And they even just recently added the ability to not only for some gameplay stuff, they added things like flying mounts and stuff like that in the game, but they just added a bunch of visual updates and you can make an argument. Hey, that should have been in the original game. All right, fair enough. But it's there now where they have much more reflective services that respond to whether it's moisture, if there's, you know, if it's Mm -hmm. raining or whatever, but also fur on the animals, all the animals did look weirdly Mm -hmm. hairless. (laughs) And so they added fur to the animals, but then what's really cool to me, because it's on PC, especially as they added the ability to activate DLSS, which Derek and I have talked about before, which really allows most machines to play it pretty smoothly. And if you have a great machine, the frame rate can just be insane. So it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, so I tried it for a little bit. It's There's way more added to it since I last played it, so I'm already a little overwhelmed trying to just figure out what I'm doing. Thankfully... Yeah you can still have fun just flying to a planet that says unknown planet. And that's exciting to just fly there, land and see what you can find. So, so. is that the image behind you? Is that no man's sky? No, this is a satisfactory. Which oh, is a okay. game that, thanks to the Epic game store, which uh, the sale on Epic games, which I still recommend people go check out every purchase 14 99 or more nets you another $10 coupon, which you can apply to any other purchase 14 99 or more. Um, so anyway, um, I bought Satisfactory, and it's not it's certainly not for everybody. Uh, I was playing it with my son Shepard sitting beside me. We were planning out some stuff. Essentially, it's what it sounds like. Like you're setting up a factory. It starts out where you're just mining for a couple small items to upgrade your little hub. And over time, you're building conveyor belts and connecting machines, and you're automating everything where all these machines are mining for you, conveyor belting it to all the different smelters and construction pieces that need to be built. Uh, and then you're p- funneling it into a storage area. Like it's all very like organization and logistics. And there's a little bit of exploration, <laughs> a little exploration and a little bit of fighting, but not much. It's mostly just, you know, building and organizing. So, but I like it. Also tried out Subnautica because the new one came out. I wanted to try the old one since it's free on Game Pass. Yeah, I'm and definitely. It, I heard that DLC up. is really good though. The I, the new one. I, well, I've never played a, the old one. It's a full one. on sequel, I think. The okay. Below Zero. Um, the old one's fine. It's, uh, I, I could see the appeal to some folks and it's just not, it's not my favorite thing. The whole underwater deal isn't my favorite, but you know, yeah. survival crafting, all that stuff. If you like that, if you like, there's a lot of underwater swimming. That's most of what it is. So, um, yeah, sorry. That's directed Derek. at Derek. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So if you guys didn't know, we do our calls on Skype for those of you just listening and, uh, we can send each other messages and or emojis. If you want to see these, you're going to have to. Watch the video. <laughs> All right. For the inside scoops. <laughs> let's jump into some headlines. I want to get your guys' reactions to some of the big headlines from the week. And then we will close out by previewing E3 and some things that are happening. What do you mean you're closing out? What the hell? Uh, we just got, got, lot, here. got a lot to get through. It'll take a little while. All right. You wouldn't know that because you didn't look at the notes. Am I right, Dan? Well, we <laughs> just got here 40 minutes ago. Or 51 minutes ago. Yeah. So. All right. So, uh... EA has confirmed that Battlefield 6, its official reveal, will happen on June 9th. There's a whole bunch of rumors and supposed leaks out about this, but we'll find out for real this coming week. Uh, So if you're interested in that, that should be an official reveal from EA. It's not part of an official presentation. You'll learn in a little bit. Their official presentation on anything isn't until the end of July. So... Uh, but this is just for Battlefield 6. Uh, I assume it'll be a trailer. Aliens Fire Team, which was a third-person survival shooter that was announced a while back, now has a release window of summer 2021. It's a, a is it Focus Home Interactive, I think. I'm, I'm trying to remember sure. who it is that's putting this out. Um, but anyway, it's it looks like a it looks like a double A game. You know, we talk about how there's only triple A in indies anymore. We're getting more of the double A experiences. You know, more of the swimming in the sevens that hopefully come out at like 40 bucks. That are, are decent at least 
And hey, that initial trailer looked fun, though. It does look pretty fun. Yeah. It does. Uh, and if you like that world, of course, there's a lot to, to look forward to there. Um, so that's supposed to be out sometime this summer. They, I guess the actual window is end of June through the end of September is what they're looking at somewhere in that window. Um, but as far as like co-op shooters go, I think they're going to want to avoid... Uh, what's the Left for Dead ripoff that's coming out? Um, oh, Back for uh, Blood. Back for Blood. Back for Blood. Yeah, that I, looks if fun. If they're thinking and planning out what other games are coming out, they should probably give it at least a month space for that one. Uh, I, I'm all for Back and Back for Blood. Yeah, that yeah, that's great. I think that's coming out this month. Is that June? No, that's coming out in October, September. It's oh, like the end of the back. year. Okay, so then yeah, yeah they push it back. It was going to come out in June, but yeah, now it's fall. See, Maybe Aliens Fire Team would want to come out sooner. Oh, Derek, you have a question? <laughs> yeah, I just want to say hi. Oh, hey, buddy. Well, usually um, you use words, <laughs> not, yeah. snor- not snores. I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if he's had a few cocktails tonight. He looks pretty cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> why is this? Why Looking am I cheeky. blurry? Am I blurry? Because you're using I, your, I phone. Think it's your phone. I think you it's your phone. You need to wipe your phone camera off or something? I don't know, man. Like your 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 video is all over the place. You're making me feel drunk, and I've only had one cocktail, so <laughs> knock it off. Tim, Tim, get him out of here. Get him out. Oh, get him out of here. There you go, Derek. Now you're all pretty. Yeah. I mean, is he though? Um, well, the, yes. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the other news that I thought this was funny. This is no surprise. Most of you already knew this already, but uh, Yuji Nakaf, the director of Balan Wonderworld, the mega hit this year oh, uh, game, of, game of the year favorite uh he has seemingly left square enix because fans yep. have noticed that he updated his social media to show that his employment ended on april 30th there's yep. no official announcement but they were like people picked up on that like <laughs> i think yep. he got fired yeah <laughs> yeah dude that game oh, jesus christ i mean Sounds that like game the just generic platformer was the, bad, but, the, yeah. but the thing I, is i didn't even Give it a shot. But the thing is, it looked like it had potential because to yes, me, like, I liked the aspect of, like, kind of the Mega Man aspect of, like, borrowing sure. powers and using that to, like, fight or do platforming unique puzzles. And it just, like, it that game sucks, dude. It was real bad. sucks. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, also, Deep Silver has announced they, <laughs> this is funny, they wanted to make an announcement that there'll be <laughs> no announcements at E3 about the following franchises. Metro, Dead Island, Saints Row, and Time Splitters. It's like cool. they're trying to get out in front of it. Before you tell us you're disappointed, we're not going to talk about these things. At, they at are least they're setting expectations. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, you know, if you're uh, thinking they're going to make some announcements here in the next couple of weeks, they're just uh, setting you straight. But The only there's franchises a couple... of those that I thought were still active were Metro and Saints Row. I didn't even, I guess I had heard rumors of Time Splitters getting well, a yeah. reboot. And I assume you know, Dead I, Island I, is gone. I think Time Splitters is getting a reboot of, of some sort. Um, Metro has a, a you know next gen update coming out soon for the PS5 and Series X. Oh, um, and I just bought that by the way too. Derek's recommendation. It was six bucks on this Epic Game Store with the coupon. Yeah, I think I got it for like five bucks or something on an Xbox and I, sale. It's actually downloading. I paused it so we could have a decent connection while we record, but it's it's in the process of downloading tonight. So I am excited to see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of waiting on that till they give the next uh, gen updates to it. Um, but I do want to check that out it's a well, different kind of shit i was gonna say like metro kind of might be done because this third one unless they're gonna do something else it ends the story so okay uh-huh. and it, i don't know if it did did it do super well commercially i don't think so i i think commercially this think last did one okay did okay yeah well, if it concludes I, the I, story it, then i think know. critically it was reviewed well and okay but i don't think sales wise it did very good yeah it could be one of those things I mean, where they either go fair, back it, like Metro Origins or something, or they just figure out a new yeah. way to keep yeah, going. Yeah, I but... mean, they could always tell different stories in the in the universe. But to be yeah. fair, like the game was like advertised at E3 as this absolutely gorgeous like next gen Xbox game, yeah, and then yep. on Xbox One X it was absolutely ugly, and then on PC <laughs> it's one really one of the best looking games with ray tracing. But when it released. The 30 series cards weren't even out. All you had was 20 series cards, and most of them could not run the game at the level that you really need to run it. So that's why, like, now with the enhanced version coming out, people are actually going to see what the game actually looks like. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep, so those are some of the general headlines. I didn't see much coming out of Microsoft and Nintendo. They both seem to be pretty quiet as they gear up for their big E3 presentations um if you guys know of anything feel well, free to 
I, think. I mean, they said that they're going to have it uh, merged with Bethesda, so I think that's a pretty huge deal. Well, yeah, we'll, yep. we'll talk about that. Right. We'll but I'm just and, saying and that, I think that in and of itself, you know. That is yep. a big deal. And I think the only thing coming out of Nintendo right now is leaks about a potential Switch upgrade, which I don't Again. know if we'll get to. Right. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, another rumor of a Switch upgrade. Um, all right. Sony, though, they do have some news. It's interesting. They're talking a lot because they're not going to be showing their faces at E3. Uh, which is still to me kind of interesting because it seems like most so companies who's are gonna jumping be back. At E3? We'll, we'll go. Er, we'll yeah, go over everybody it. Except almost Sony. everybody except for Sony is what it's looking like at this point. Like pretty much every. Oh, and EA. EA doesn't isn't gonna have like their own presentation there. They'll have. I thought separate. EA was still doing like an EA Play or something. In July, they're doing a oh, separate. Oh, July. Thing. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, but here's some Sony news. Uh, God of War Ragnarok, which I believe we can say is probably the official title at this point. Right. Uh, is delayed until 2022. No shocker there. I didn't even expect it to come out this year. But the bigger news, in my opinion, and something that's making some folks really upset, is that it's also coming to the PS4, which kind of confirms that... Oh, I thought this... it was the big news that somebody blamed Alana Pierce for, for <laughs> the delay. Dude, but seriously, though, like, come on. People are so like, dumb. Like, I mean... The you get hired, just... the game gets delayed. A yeah, no, but... yeah, like she arrives and goes, hang on, guys, I need to rewrite the whole script. Like, that's not no. what happened. No. But it's the it's no. the other stuff that's like, all right, this is, she's basically a stranger to you. Like, do you really need to go to that length and say People those kind horrible. of things? To, like, Yeah, that, that guy. Trolls are going to always troll, and I thought it was actually I... really stupid on Car- uh, whatever, Carl Barlog or whatever. Oh, Corey, Bar- Corey Barlog. Corey for him to, like, broadcast it everywhere like just shut up they're trolling they're don't not give him serious. attention yep. because i think he's just trying to show support for one of his employees but it's like i know what he's doing you know? but also alana yeah. shouldn't have done it it was you're, what i'm saying is you're drawing attention if you think that's gonna stop trolls they're actually gonna go uh i'm gonna keep doing this yeah look yeah. at look at this guy's 15 seconds of fame that he's getting even though he's the bad guy he's getting attention Yep, yeah. that's all they want. Um, all right, so that is also going to PS4. Listen, until I'm going to withhold judgment till we see the actual game because we just watched the yeah. Horizon Forbidden West preview last week. Right, 100% we looks, generations. 100% <laughs> looks next gen and amazing to me. <laughs> yep, I've got and... no problems with there being a previous generation version. I won't be playing it. I'll be playing the PS5 I mean, version. Dude, the 2018 one still looks pretty gorgeous. So yep. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I I don't really see there being a problem with it. I do think that their marketing behind it is a little, you know, funny. Um, you know, it, just the whole I do believe in generations thing. Oh. Um, you know, when they came out, they marketed Gran Turismo as a PS5 exclusive. Um, right. you know, and they really made big waves about that. I don't, you know, I wish it wasn't crash generational i wish it was just a ps5 exclusive and in the past the way that these things worked is when a new console come out those hundred million consoles from the previous generation they got left behind new games came out they weren't available to them that's just the way it was and you know that's the way people want it to be and i'm fine with that i'm also fine with it being (laughs) cross-gen but a year ago when we were having this conversation Microsoft was coming out saying we're going to have cross generational games for a couple of and years. It, it was just a smear campaign against them where Sony went out and said, We, we believe, believe in generations. In and <laughs> it's really coming back to bite them because so and, far and, they've and only now, had you know, three and, and PS5 only games, right? Demon Souls, yep. Returnal, and Ratchet and Clank's about to come out. Is there, are yep. there any others that are not on both generations? Mm, God, not God that I can. Fall. Oh, okay, Godfall, Godfall, game of Godfall. the year. Godfall, <laughs> Godfall. Right. So, but but you know it, it's very few and far between, and I I'm fine with there being console exclusives, stuff that's only PS5. When you have these big games that sell millions of copies, of course it makes sense to want to sell them to the hundred million install base of the PS4. Sure. Why sure. wouldn't you want to do that when it was PS4 versus PS3? I don't think it was as much of an option. Um, Infamous Second Son wasn't going to run on a PS3, no matter how hard you tried, I don't think. Yeah. But you no, can probably make God of War Ragnarok on PS5, make it amazing, make it look great, and still make a version that runs yeah, on PS4. Just like Horizon 2, right? Just, just like Miles yeah. Morales. And, Miles Morales. And yeah. Halo's going to do it. And, you know, I, and. Yeah, I think there's drawbacks. I think, to it. 
I think I, it doesn't take. It's almost like the lazy way of combating the the scalpers, right? Instead of yeah. like trying to actually directly tackle that issue, they're like, "Well, well, the previous uh, generation can play the game too. Everybody wins." But it's like, but the funny thing is, know? though, <laughs> if you look at PS5 sales right now, even with the scarce availability, they've sure. sold more PS5s than they sold PS4s in this right. time. I think, de- I think yeah. demand is just higher than it was before. You yeah. know, and I, I'm sure it is. But yeah. Infamous Second Son didn't come to oh. PS3 because you know they couldn't sell enough right, ps4s right. and you know i don't think it's a bad thing to change your mind change your strategy there's nothing wrong with it there's a lot of people with problems I mean, with it yeah and and i don't think like ratchet and clank i don't think that would run on a ps4 i think how that game's designed and is there something that horizon god of war is missing because they're still targeting yeah. a ps4 i think yeah probably there is but is it significant enough to where we're not going to get an amazing ps5 game probably not and returnal couldn't because of the controller u- utilization right so that has to be ps5 you, only you'd so. literally have to remap the controller of how yeah. it functioned on a ps4 i think it could yeah. be done though um i yeah. just don't think it you would can be... turn that off like you can turn off the yeah. the halfway hold, uh, gotcha. hold down I, so, and I just don't think, yeah, I mean, it would be different, but I I totally think Returnal could be get a cross-gen port. I, I honestly think Ratchet and Clank, with what they're doing with the, the warping between dimensions, happen. that probably can't happen without a, a super-fast SSD. Otherwise, well, and you mentioned it too, Dan, I meant to say it earlier. Gran Turismo 7 also announced as coming to PS4, kind of subtly mentioned as coming. Yeah, to and, and, and last year, if you remember, when it was showcased in, in yeah. Sony's PS5 showcase, they marketed it as a PS5 exclusive then and yeah. said we believe in generations but now just a subtle shift that yeah we're going to release it on ps4 too i so. think it's one of those things where it was an easy shot at the competition who didn't seem to be fully bought into their own next generation so it's an easy thing to take a shot at sure i'm guessing that once marketing heard from i don't know which department it would be accounting whoever it is on the numbers like here's what we would lose if we don't put it out on ps4 too it's like oh crap yep. You know, right. and, and, and I don't think wrong. it's, yeah, yeah, and I don't think it's any big deal to walk it back. And that's obviously what they're doing. But, you know, there there's some people, I think, from last year that need to eat a little crow on that, too. Well, speaking of. Bab. Suck it, Bab. Speaking of last <laughs> gen. He, hey, he still believes it should be PS5 only. He so. does. Yeah, he he, he, he does not eat, need to eat any crow. But all, I mean, I, all but, I'm saying yeah. is I, I think the arguments are valid either way, yeah. whether you want to argue for it being a cross gen or argue for it being a PS5 exclusive. I just think that the way that Sony marketed this and, yeah. and everything, they didn't say what they meant. It's. Where where other companies have been forthright with what it, they it's meant. It's the same with the Final Fantasy, uh, the Yuffie DLC, where that's just PS5. I'm like, good. Yep. Make it just yeah. PS5. From the ground up, it's built All for right. the PS5. This is what I want. Like, show me what... The only reason what, that's a little difficult is because know. it's an add-on to a PS4 game. That's but fine. I agree with you in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, I, yep. I want these yeah. things built from yeah. the ground up on the and, new machine. there should be know? things things like that and we've done it every generation for as long as i've been gaming i'm sorry but i cannot play super mario world on my nes it's just not how it works you know (laughs) and you know but to be fair the technology technology jumps are much smaller like the steps the steps are there and it's there and if you've got the if you've got the tv to display it and all that you'll see a difference don't get me wrong i've noticed the difference myself i've learned about frame rate and stuff like that but the the in my opinion the incremental increases have slowed down like the steps used to be super oh, steep yeah. between NES to the N64 to yep. the game you know e- even so, PS3 to PS4 it just it, the, that wouldn't that wouldn't work but yeah. you know when you're taking Horizon Forbidden West and a PS4 version of it is 4K checkerboard at 30 frames a second and PS5 is native 4K at 60 frames a second like those are the differences that we're seeing now. And, you know, I'm going to play the PS5 version of it, but I'm not mad that the PS4 version exists. It's going to look great on both. It's going to look better on PS5. Uh, same with all the other cross-gen stuff. PSVR is not dead yet. We know that their second iteration is coming probably next year. We don't know for sure. Uh, but they did a PSVR spotlight, Sony did, this week. Again, this kind of feels like they're between the state of play for Horizon and and the news that's come out recently, this feels a little bit like here's our summer update. So I don't know that we're going to hear much more from Sony until later this year, but I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, some of the PSVR games I wanted to highlight, or that they highlighted, Sniper Elite VR comes out on July 8th, complete with their X-ray cam and their zoom-in stuff that they do. If you've ever played those games, I feel like in VR that's, that could be pretty cool. Um, Wind and Leaves comes out July 27th. It's, a, it's basically a uh, if you're a tree hugger, 
You can want to replant the forests. You can do that in Wind and Leaves. This sounds like a Derek T game. Yeah, it yes, does. Absolutely. For sure. Um, For sure. Wanderer. Uh, com- this one actually sounds kind of cool. It's a time travel game, but it's like real moments and people in history, and you get to experience it through their perspective. Anything from the Mayan ruins to they even take you to an imagined future of a, an apocalypse that happened. So every mm-hmm. and everywhere in between. So uh, it's called Wanderer. Uh, Arashi, Castles of Sin, kind of a stealth action game set in feudal Japan. Um, that comes out this summer. Fract, which they revealed, I want to say, on a recent state of play. Was it earlier this year, maybe? Fract. Um, this is a really fast-paced action game where you do everything from downhill skiing to running around on foot, climbing real fast, shooting the whole time, basically. Mm. So, um, Cover-based shooter, it looks like, in some cases. Uh, Puzzle Bobble 3D is a 3D version of Puzzle Bobble. And mm. af- After the Fall is a four-player co-op shooter where you have to essentially survive against these undead enemies that are taking over L.A. Um, so, yeah, and that does not have a release window. So there you go. There's some of the news from Sony. Who knows when we'll hear from Sony again, but we I mean, do know we're going to hear from a lot of these other companies. So let's go through what we should expect over the next, oh, let's call it two weeks. Uh, over the next two weeks, we'll be getting a whole bunch of info from a whole bunch of companies. This isn't all just E3. Some of it is Jeff Keighley's uh, Summer Game Fest. Some of it is just other, you know, some websites are doing their own kind of presentations. So we'll go through what you can what you can watch over the next couple of weeks here. The first thing, and th- by the way, the source I'm using is from Games Radar. There's lots of different websites that are putting up the schedules and you can use whatever guide you want, but I thought Games Radar uh, schedule was pretty good. Uh, June 5th, the Gorilla Collective. So they're going to have two parts uh, of kind of a reveal of games. Um, I wasn't aware that Gorilla did this. Um, but anyway, the Gorilla Collective, um, it's going to have two parts. The first one's June 5th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. And the second one's going to be during the, the start of E3, I think. So let's see here. The first round is way before other E3 events, unless you decide that Dying Light 2 and Horizon and some of these other events count, you know, the Battlefield 6. Um, but they've partnered with developers and publishers like Raw Fury, Good Shepherd, Inner Sloth, Tiny Build, and more for some announcements, reveals. I'm assuming these are going to be mostly smaller indies. smaller indie games. So, uh, so that's June 5th. And then we get to June 10th. So this is where we're getting closer and closer to the actual kind of, it's essentially a four-day weekend building into the next week. That's what E3 is. So June 10th is two days before E3 kicks off. And this is the kickoff live of Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest. And that event happens at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. I think he did this last year. I didn't really tune in to much of what was happening. I I was going to say, like, you know, for whatever, um, you know, the Game Fest was last year, I didn't feel like anything important or of note came out of it i didn't even own i almost didn't even notice that it happened correct and same here i, I knew of his game awards stuff but i wasn't aware yep. of his summer and so fest. i'm really hoping this year like there's some substance here and like some wow announcements because like i want to care i like jeff Keeley. i like what he does um oh. you know his passion for the game industry but yeah you well, got to give me a, a little bit more than what you did last year because i can't how... even how he could wow us because i was thinking probably game awards to be honest but if he did want to wow us his boy kojima needs to show up and let us know what he's working on yeah that could be cool and i think that could happen yeah Um, but he describes it himself as there's going to be a bunch of news announcements updates from over 30 game publishers and they include activision epic playstation and xbox in that list Mm. so maybe that is when we hear something from sony but my guess is if we hear from them it'll be an update on something we already know about but who knows maybe it'll just be another horizon a new version of the horizon trailer or something I, i don't know um but keely promises more than a dozen world premieres and announcements from select publishers world and, premiere and he did that with the game awards too and i mean love it or hate it like he he delivered on that they delivered a whole yep. bunch of world premieres no, during absolutely. the last few years so we'll see what that's all about that's on june 10th at 11 um and then the ign expo is the next day so that's that's uh, part of they have a whole like summer of gaming thing that they do yep and their expo is um it's essentially their way of having their own game reveals they've partnered with a few publishers to kind of reveal their own thing um they've got so many of the different 
video and audio personalities. They want to put them front and center and talk about these things. So, you know, and, and I don't know if it was just the COVID and E3 going all digital last year, um, but the IGN summer game fest, whatever, completely, it was the same thing. It was just lackluster. It felt like nothing good came out of it. Like um, I was really hoping for these events last year to kind of fill yeah. that E3 void and everything was so segmented and so yep. far apart. And I just didn't feel like there was, you know, un- unless it was the, sony presentation or the xbox presentation like nothing just wowed me out of these last year and and again i just want something different i'm, 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 I'm kind of hungry I, for it, man i want yeah, i want i want, I want them to up the game just just a little bit yeah. G- give me that that game awards <laughs> moment or or whatever it might be but um well but, they're yeah. saying they're gonna offer game reveals never before seen gameplay from from what i assume are known games but they'll show some gameplay and and other announcements so they're claiming to have this stuff. Listen, you know that I'm desperate for this kind of thing. I'm really excited for an event like this because oh. I'll probably even tune into IGN's Expo because I'm you know, that excited for this I, stuff. <laughs> I honestly am too. And then like, I'm going to look for this stuff and it's just like, um, you know, and, and a lot of the times the, these things, they, they say all these world premieres and announcements uh-huh. and gameplays and yep. it's just the, uh, you know, you, you get your mindset that it's going to be something really cool and it's just not. Yep. <laughs> and by it's the just way, like, the, it's these games. It's like, I could care less what this game yeah, looks like. If you're listening, uh, the reason I haven't asked, you know, what's your prediction or what would you like to see is because these are all just, I mean, you're just literally pulling it out of thin air. You have no idea. Mm. This isn't, we're not talking about developers or publishers yet. When we get to them, like to Ubisoft, we can go around and talk about what would you like to see or what would be a, a big, a good surprise or something like that. But for most of these, who knows what IGN is going to show and GameSpot yeah. has them later, who knows what they're going to show. Um, so that's on June 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. I think that's a Friday. And then June 12th on Saturday is when E3 officially kicks off, which I think is different timing than what we've seen in the past when it was in person. I believe it normally kicked off on a Monday or even a Tuesday sometimes, I think. Well, I think it was a lot of times. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Xbox always seemed to go on. It would Sunday. start Sunday, I, right? Yeah. I, it would start I, Sunday well, I think night. Xbox did a Sunday night show, but then E3, as far as the open floor, wasn't till Monday morning, Monday, maybe. maybe. Okay. Something I mean, like, because like, I know Xbox was always early, so I was, yeah, I no. can't remember. It, they did, like, it would be like Ubisoft or somebody Sunday night. No, Bethesda Sunday night. Bethesda Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Monday would be Monday morning would be Xbox. Sony would do an evening Wednesday, one day, and I think yeah, Tuesday they, they do the Nintendo. evening. It seemed like after Xbox. Sounds right. Sounds right. Um, so they're saying that officially kicks off on Saturday, June twelfth, that kind of mid morning. Um, also, Guerrilla Collective is doing the second part of whatever it is they have to announce. So that's part two. You know, part one was June 5th, and then a week later, they're going to do in part two. So it's more announcements. There's something called the Wholesome Direct, which I never heard of before. I guess it's been going for a couple <laughs> years here. Um, that's at 10 a.m. that morning as well. And that's where they essentially just feature a bunch of, it looks like 75 games, they're saying. All of which are guaranteed to be good for your soul. So I don't know what this means. Is it like all hmm. farming games? Is it all like... You can't have a game in here unless you can pet a dog. I don't know what it means. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it, I think all right. It's like I'm making my wife watch this. Like Facebook games. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Who knows? Making my wife um, watch. Hey, if there's one interesting one there, I'll call it a win uh, out sure. of 75. Um, all right. Then we have uh, the first official E3 presentation. That's from Gearbox. And I put 10 a.m. Pacific because that's when E3 is supposed to kick what? off. And it says it's launching with a Gearbox entertainment show. But that wow. could just be some announcements from Gearbox. They might not actually have a... A presentation I, I don't know um but gearbox is listed and you'll see a lot of these they're listed as attending e3 uh, and gearbox announcements are happening at the kickoff so what would you guys expect to see from gearbox if you had to guess cross you... play on playstation 5 <laughs> for borderlands well, never, don't never. expect anything so. got godfall dlc game of the year that's all we want <laughs> I want a sequel. I want a sequel already. Right. I now. think they're gonna have. I think they're gonna have a. Uh, I don't think it will be Borderlands Four, but I think there will be like a, a spinoff a Borderlands project. Hmm. That's a spinoff. Like and prequel, then, like the prequel or whatever it was. Or? I think it'll be something different. Because they made that. the prequel like, I, after the fact, right? Yeah, yeah, but I I honestly think like whatever Borderlands is next, like it 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 might be something different than a than a looter shooter. Like, yeah, I think maybe, they're gonna... maybe they try to take that universe into a different genre, and they did it real good with uh, Tales from the Borderlands. Tales was and obviously, good, yeah. Obviously, that was a different developer and everything with that, but 
I I think they might try to do something different with that franchise next. And I, I could be wrong, but I, I think we'll see a proper uh, Borderlands 4 at some point. Well, they and did. I, there are... Uh, is there a leak or a rumor about the spinoff with Tiny Tina? I don't know if they announced it officially, but there's a Tiny I, I, Tina. Yep, I, I, I heard a spinoff leak of some mm-hmm. sorts, and I, I'm just envisioning something of a different genre. Um, whether it's like a role-playing game or an adventure game, like yep. I, I think it's going to be something in that universe. They got a movie coming out. I, I just think they're really going to try to build... Uh, different things other than just a looter shooter in this universe. Yep. And I, I really thought Tales from the Borderlands was a was a, a good sign that they can do other things that are that highly entertaining in the Borderlands. <laughs> well, don't forget that they also have a publishing side. They don't just make games like Borderlands. They also publish. They helped publish Godfall out for PS5 launch. And they are currently assisting Blackbird Interactive with Homeworld 3. So they've got other things that they could be talking about during their... Their, uh, I don't know if it's a show or not, but during their announcements. Uh, Ubisoft Forward, though, we do know is, will be much more of a presentation. We've seen Ubisoft Forward presentations before. That's going to air at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. And again, we don't necessarily know exactly what they'll show, but I'm going to say it's almost certainly going to reveal visual, probably some gameplay of the new Division Heartland thing that they announced. Mm-hmm. Or at least at least some screenshots from it, right? They'll talk about the Division, I think. Um, and CG then trailer. the the thing that I don't think will happen, but I would love to happen, would be Here Comes Splinter Cell, whatever the new one is going to be called. <laughs> I, I think that, that's that would be my pie-in-the-sky hope Me for too. Ubisoft. And, I don't and think I, so. I, I would say, bet against it happening, but I would love it. Yep, I say it every year, but I mean that's really what I want to happen. What I know is going to happen with Ubisoft is Just Dance is going to be there. We're going to have a silly <laughs> reveal, Obviously. and it's going to be ridiculous, and nobody's going to care, but everybody's going to buy the game. So, Would anybody uh, be excited for a Mario plus Rabbids sequel? I was actually going to say, Tim, uh, I I could I could see them potentially doing uh it, I mean I think it did well. It, did. it definitely surprised so. it, people. It was yeah. received very well and yeah, I, I honestly I just picked it up uh over the winter here. It was like a cheap sale on the eShop I think for like 10 bucks. Me and my my wife that doesn't even play video games, she even um bought it and uh and got yeah. into playing it and it's an entertaining game. I yeah. I've never really played XCOM and I I think it's great. So I hope they do. Yeah. No Derek, skull and bones, think, they've too, already Ubisoft said. And, and, and I honestly think we will see a skull and bones revival. Oh, well, uh, this they, they said they said they're not showing it at this either. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I know that it's still being worked on. What was it yeah. showed? Three, four e- E3s ago? I mean, it's been out there for a while now. And they I need to I, either I, either put their effort into that thing and finish it or just let it die, you know, yep. put it out. And they need to do one thing or the other. And it doesn't seem like they're letting it die. So that's kind of why I was thinking we'll see it sooner than later, but who knows? Derek, what are you thinking? It's probably too early for an Assassin's Creed or anything like that. What do you think they'll do? Far Cry six. They'll just yeah. focus in on that probably. Sure. Yeah. yeah that's and I, I bet you we see a bigger presence to that. And I think what they showed of the gameplay reveal, that might just be more of a tease of what they're going to show later on and i hope they go more in depth of it i thought the gameplay reveal was great so i've heard I'd there's like going to be more opportunities um, for third person um in far cry 6 yeah, because they do want yeah. you to connect with your character more than previous games so yeah i think they'll talk about what they're doing with watchdogs legion like they just released oh. like a zombie mode for yep. pc i've that heard that's actually, actually pretty like decent left, yeah it looks kind of like a left for dead type mode mm-hmm. um so I do actually think I know it's always wanted and predicted. I do think we're getting a Splinter Cell. This I think this that's going to be the big surprise. I'm so excited! Or I don't think they'll do it, but maybe a South Park. But I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Prince of Persia reboot? That kind of got oh, yeah. delayed indefinitely. <laughs> do you think we see that again this E3? I don't think not, we'll hear about that again until the end not. of the year at the earliest. I yeah. think they yeah, had to go back to the drawing board. Actually, looks like a reboot yeah because i i I think they kind of got raked over the coals with that and and rightfully so that game looked like trash it looked like an early ps4 game at best i mean it even looked like did it and they re-recorded audio and then it's like here we go and i was like this is how i remember it looking yeah yeah yeah, (laughs) i mean it looked worse but (laughs) yeah no i I, right but no this is this it wasn't enough and no, and they yeah, yeah. really need to do something different with that. I think if they want any, if they want to revive the right. the Prince of Persia, they need to do a proper reboot, or um, or either just do a proper remake of that. There's game. also the what is it? Tom Clancy's 
it's it's in the Tom Clancy, but there's that quarantine game they announced, I think, two E3s ago. They 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 haven't really that. said much about it, but it, it was like kind of a creepy. It was like a really short teaser thing, but it like it kind of had like almost zombie vibes or like you know undead like on vibes. But yeah, it's like something. I think it's Tom Clancy's Quarantine or like something like that. But yeah, I that could maybe pop up because again, yeah. it's been a couple e three since we've heard anything about that. So yeah, it makes sense. They wouldn't have talked about it last year um, during right. quarantine. Right. Um, <laughs> And then that day wraps up with Devolver Digital. I don't have any details on the time uh, or no, what games we'll talk about, but Devolver always is nuts. If you ever watch their presentations, they're insane, man. And they're their fun games, to watch. Their yeah, games they're entertaining. Sometimes sure. are good and sometimes not. But anyway, uh, Devolver closes out that night. June 13th on Sunday. This is when the heavy hitters start to land. It starts at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern with the Xbox and Bethesda Combined Games Showcase. So this is a unique one, of course. We all know that uh, Microsoft acquired. Is it going to be longer? Um, 90 minutes. She said. It's 90 minutes. And I think yep. that's typically about what they do. <laughs> and they're saying it's games, games, games. And this is the statement. Uh, it's packed with everything you want to know about Epic Gaming lineup. The Epic Gaming lineup coming out of this partnership. The incredible games coming to Xbox this holiday. Upcoming releases on Xbox Game Pass and more. And the teaser image suggests Halo Infinite, Starfield, um, kind of for at, at the jump. Starfield, huh? All right. That's what it. That's well, what I don't it get to play to, Starfield, so yeah, I don't really care. To right? that. So that'll be the first big one that I think. You got a phone, uh, don't you, Dan? You got a PC. You can play Starfield. <laughs> I don't know if my laptop could, my four-year-old laptop could handle Starfield. Hey, if it can handle X Cloud streaming, you're get, good to go. That's true. <laughs> So that'll kick off the day, and uh, essentially, uh, maybe not right when that's over. You have time to go grab something to eat, maybe hit the bathroom, and then come back and settle in for the Square Enix Showcase at 12.15 p.m. Yeah. Uh, Pacific time, or 3.15 Eastern. Kind of weird times to pick, but okay. Um, and th- it's set to feature a host of new reveals and updates, including a world premiere from the Deus Ex Mankind Divided developer, Eidos Montreal. So we don't know what they're going to reveal, but they, they're set to reveal whatever that is they've been working on. Um, and of course, we could expect an updates on things like Babylon Fall, Life, the new Life is Strange game. Almost certainly Marvel's Avengers will get talked about because they're still supporting that, for better or worse. Uh, they're saying about 40 minutes of time for the square. Um, so, you know, Jason Trier, obviously super woke, cool guy on uh, on Twitter. Um, so he's confirmed that it's real, but I mean, we'll wait and see, but, uh, 2k, 2k is, um, well, actually this has nothing to do with Square Enix. I thought for some reason, I think I had Marvel event. I had the Avengers game in my head and Square Enix, but, um, 2k is reportedly set to announce uh, Marvel XCOM. So like an XCOM Marvel game. Okay, cool. So I had that that in my head and I was thinking, although the idea of superheroes waiting their turn for a turn-based battle game is kind of, (laughs) yeah, right. Um, I'm as far as the Square Enix show. I mean, they haven't actually confirmed whether 16 is going to be there or not. Um, we'll see. Uh, I, I I would definitely say that that has more potential to show up than Remake Two. Mm. Um, I think they I think they're still plowing away at Remake Two, and um, I don't know. Maybe maybe wait until a little bit when it's closer to release to kind of do like a big shebang. I think uh, the Square Showcase would be an instant success, one of my favorites, if they did really feature Final Fantasy 16 and give yeah. us a release date, even if it's early 2022 or whatever, if we had a release window even, then it would be a pretty big success. But I don't expect that to happen. I actually expect them to maybe not even talk about it at all and focus on all their other franchises yeah. and then give us a Final Fantasy update maybe July, August or something. I but, need something Final Fantasy, Tim. I need I know. it. All right? I know. It's Square well, there Enix, might be something. There might be like their mobile games. Like I, I'd be surprised if we get a real update on 16. Although I would love it if we did. We didn't. I didn't ask you guys about Microsoft and Bethesda though. What would make? Let me ask you this. Mm. Uh, what would make that a really successful, really good presentation in your mind? Um, and since we are going a little bit longer here, maybe just one or two minutes. What would make that a home run for you? We'll start think, with you, Dane Phillips, since you're our guest here. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different things xbox would probably do to make their show they're they're saying games 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 
show us the games. I'm uh, hoping for some like big third party partnerships with like Game Pass, kind of like what they did with Outriders and MLB The Show. Um, let's see some of the fall games coming to Game Pass day one uh, from third parties. I think that'd be cool. Uh, design Lab. I really want my Design Lab back so I can design my own Xbox controller. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm hoping there's an update there. That's just kind of a, a personal want. Um, but I I think like uh, the the big things that would would um, really you know um, set that apart and get them noticed if there was another um, studio acquisition um, you know whatever that might I mean, be whether how about all the acquisitions they've already done actually showing something <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or or that you know and, and yeah. that's what I'm hoping with the games 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 that we we actually see what's coming from this um, fable perfect dark you know if we get cinematics from something like that um, whether it's what obsidian in exile uh, machine games you know w- what those guys are working on pretty confident we're going to see starfield nobody's seen anything but a logo on that so i think that's going to be a pretty big deal for them yeah if what they, is if, that game if, you know? if they do actually show what starfield is um and, and but if I they do does that make it a, a winning conference for you if they show that oh well, not alone um yeah. you know i think if it if it's a cool looking thing and everything it's what a lot of people are expecting but i want you know i i like the leaks and speculations and rumors and everything but i want something that's a surprise yeah. um if I saw Elden Ring, yes, that that that's a winning <laughs> show for me. Give me Elden Ring there gameplay and a release date, and I think it's great. Give me something like a Kojima Productions uh, collaboration, or oh. uh, or or some type of Japanese studio type um, acquisition or collaboration. Like I think they need a little bit more of that. I I just want something that's a surprise, um, unexpected. And I, yeah. I think there's a lot of potential there. Obviously, they got a lot of studios, so let let's see the games. Derek, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say that for me, for it to be winning, I need to see release dates. I need yeah. to know, or at least release windows of when some of these big hitters are coming. I'd like to see more of Fable, uh, even though I don't think that's coming out anytime soon. I'd still like to see it, and then. Um, halo infinite like i want to see what it is you know with the release you want to see craig you want to see craig <laughs> i do Dance just like around. that just like that <laughs> no and i i honestly think it would be pretty cheeky if they showed craig then and craig now and yeah. uh, you know if <laughs> like it, a if makeover it was, yeah if it was <laughs> a big makeover. difference i i think it'd be pretty uh great if they actually acknowledged that and said yeah. this is you know where we started where we're going yeah yeah um yeah for for me it's very similar i do think i just want to see i want to see a good combination of games that we kind of expect the halos and and if they decide to reveal like at the end some kind of gear six thing or whatever they want to do to kind of tease us and kind of give us that last exciting thing i I'm, i want that but i want to be surprised like to me that would make it a winning show if i'm just surprised and finally like all my complaining and i'll i'll, I'll own it all my whining about Microsoft, what in the world are you doing? You've bought all these studios and did you tell them all to stop working? Like what, what was the point of buying them if you're not going to release any games? And so I would love to be surprised with the volume just to see, to do what Nintendo did in 2017 and 2018, where we get a wide variety of genres, almost a major game a month. If you look yep. back at their release schedule, Nintendo did, it started with Zelda and then it just didn't stop. It was like Mario Kart and then you had Rabbids and you had Mario Odyssey and then you had Xenoblade and, and, 2. And it continued for like 18 straight months. I would love to see Microsoft finally deliver on what and, Phil Spencer's been talking about for three years. Yep, and I, I honestly think that, you know, you're you are got every right to complain and, and about that, but I, I honestly think we're going to have to wait longer. I do not think 2021 is the year that we start seeing all yeah, this stuff come to right. fruition. I but think to Derek's Halo, point, if they told me it's all going to start yeah, in January. In 20, well, yeah, if, me, if, if it's all going to start in 2022, I mean, honestly, I think, you know, because they do have so many studios, once this stuff does start hitting and these these things start coming out, whether it's something from Fable or Perfect Dark to you know Obsidian's new game or, or whatever it is, you're going to have these major releases every few months, and it's just going to be a bang, bang, bang. But that's what would make for, it really cool, and I'll go back yep. to Derek's point. Even if it were like... We get to see how things are spaced out for the next two years. So let's say yeah. we know we know Fable's yeah, not going to be Marvel here till Studios fall of 2022 or whatever. 
great, but show me like the window of how they're yep. moving around. But anyway, I would love to see that. I don't think we're going to see that. No company is that transparent, but boy, I would love that. Um, Cause I know internally they're, they're doing that internally. They have their release calendar and they're mm-hmm. trying to map things out to maintain their customer base and interest and all that stuff. They're trying to do that, but I would, I would love if they pulled back the curtain on that a little bit, but mm-hmm. I know they won't. I, so. I, I think 2022, we probably start seeing more of that and they've done it Hopefully. a little bit, at least, at least showing us projects that are in the works, but like fable, perfect dark, things like that. They're a ways off. Like, I don't think they're, they and might not even be 2022 games. To be fair to Microsoft, along with everyone else for this year, we really don't have a ton of first party releases for the holiday that we know about at all. Nintendo's the only one that I know of that has a first party release date set in stone and it's a remake of DS Pokemon games. Yeah. Well, Halo is going to come out this year. Pretty sure. Horizon will too, but I'm saying we don't have any solid dates on any of those things. So, and I, I honestly think we do get a a solid date on Halo this year. I bet it's the 20th anniversary of Halo. It would make sense. Why wouldn't you shoot for that date? You know, especially if you're going to delay it a year, they can't delay it any further. I think at this point, but I mean, have you, have you heard of final fantasy 15? (laughs) (laughs) It's true. And you know, eventually when it released, I enjoyed it, but yeah, yeah, that was a development hell. And, you know, there there are games like that and everything, but I really sure, don't think sure. Halo is going to go, go much more down the path than Holiday this year. All right, I'm and... pushing it on for the sake of time here. We also oh, have the Future future Games show from Games Radar Plus, uh, which is apparently their second year of doing this. And they did have, a, from what I heard, a pretty entertaining show with some good reveals. This year it's hosted by Laura Bailey and Troy Baker. So that'll be an interesting combo, those two, because um, they I, were just um, in a pretty major game. Just... Can I just real quick sneak in? Uh, I forgot to mention Final Fantasy Origins potentially at the Square Enix uh, oh, yeah. conference. If they announce that, that would be cool. So we'll see. Yeah, that. yeah, that rumor that we talked about last week. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That, that, so, that Demon Souls, like Final the Fantasy. the Souls esque Final yep. Fantasy. I'd be all for it. Games, so. Absolutely, that would be cool. That'd be cool. Um, they did say that Warner Brothers is going to have some announcements. So I don't know if that means they're going to have their own little oh. video. Or uh, if they're just going to be included in other announcements, but um, so yeah. WB owns NetherRealm. NetherRealm has been rumored to be making a Marvel fighting game. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if that gets announced, that will blow my mind. Yeah, so, that yep. could be one of those things where it's being included in another showcase somewhere, or it could be a thing where Warner Brothers will have its own little yeah. set and time. That would be a big deal. So. Yep, and we and we got the Suicide Squad game from Rocksteady. That's Warner yeah. Brothers, isn't it? And I would love so, to see, hey, I'd here like comes part gameplay. three of the Mordor games. You know, the yep. uh, Shadow sure. of Mordor. Well, don't they have the, the Smeagol game coming out? Like, yeah, that, I don't, want, I don't I think, care about that. I, uh. no, who does? <laughs> but, uh, but I think that's their next uh, Lord of the Rings right. thing, unfortunately. Right. Although I'd love to see the next step in that Nemesis system in one of those Shadow shadow games um so that's it for the 13th that sunday on monday there's going to be a whole bunch of other announcements and things happening and gameplay and all that but the two main because there's lots of developers and publishers that are going to make announcements but the two main ones for monday are going to be capcom and take two interactive um capcom of course being very big they're going to probably have lots to talk about we'll talk about them in a second take two is surprisingly big with the um, number of oh, yeah. things that they publish and their development teams that create games too. So who knows if it'll be like a, maybe they'll talk about GTA and red dead online with next gen consoles and stuff like that. Or if it'll be a brand new game reveal, maybe they'll, they'll dig into one of their um, it's untapped franchises. We haven't heard from in a while. Who knows? It, could be anything. It's weird that they're even like specifying that they're showing take two, Rockstar, all of that, like they don't, they don't really partake in E3. They do their own Correct. things, like they do countdowns to when they're doing like their announce. So this is definitely a bit odd, I think. So yeah, we'll go see. look at the schedule that ESA released, and they're listed as Monday alongside with Capcom. But there's no mm-hmm. time or details. It could be one of those things where maybe they're just during the show, whoever's hosting E3 for that day might be like, all right, we're gonna show a trailer from a new game from Take Two right now. Like it could be one of those things where it's sure. just some announcements from them. Sure, sure. Same thing with Capcom. I think it's it would be uh <laughs> it would be amazing to see uh <laughs> here's here's pie in the sky for me for Capcom. And you guys don't all have to chime in if you don't want to uh, oh, I got pie in the sky. Idea, but you got pie my in pie in the sky for Capcom would be I I wanna see a full that full on Resident Evil Four remake. That's what now I want to see. Yet. Yes. It's now that I, I know you're saying not yet, but dude, they've been look nope. at what they've released over the last three years, or I guess four years. If you go oh, back I to know. Resident Evil Seven, they put out seven 
uh, two remake, three remake, and and eight or village. I mean, it, it might be too crazy. soon from when eight just came out, though. That's the only. Thing. I, I really don't. I'm think talking so. about I an announcement for it. They yeah, could, but sure. they got different but, teams on all these and the ways that they're pumping out the remakes to the main mainline games. Right. I think it's time to say, you know, we gave Resident Evil 8 its spotlight. It came out, it shown. The let's only, announce let's announce and show show be. Resident the Evil. The only 4. reason that I'm the only reason that I'm hesitant that that would happen is like cuz like I would think that they cuz they seem to want to release these like pretty early in the year. So I don't know if it's close enough to early next year where they'd want to do that yet. That's the only thing. Sure. So. I think I think it. Uh, well, listen. I, that's I why I called it pie in the sky. I oh, don't yeah. think it's Tim, gonna happen. I'm all. But, I'm all for it, Tim. I'm all for but it. But I would love it. Um, what would you guys want to see from either Capcom or Take I want Two a on a freaking Mega Man game? Give me a goddamn Mega Man game, Capcom. All right. I get in a fune and you, you, you guys <laughs> broke up. It was real messy. I get it. But just please, for the love of God, like Mega Man is just such a cool character and it's a cool world. Like just. Give us Mega Man, Mega Man X specifically, because they you want, made. You want Mega Man Thirteen with the continue? No, 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 Mega Man X, because they've yeah. done two of the classic ones, sequels to the classic series. Fair I want, enough. I like the X series. I think the X series just aesthetically appeals to me more. I like the vibes of it sliding around and charging up the shots. Um, oh, yeah. I guess they made Mega Man Thirteen, so Fourteen would be the next one if they do sure. old school again. But okay. I want, I want Mega Man X. Right. Or or legends, and you could have like a really nice open world like Mega Man game that like looks really nice and has cool you know mechanic. I mean, I don't know what they do. Just call it Mega Man. Just start from scratch and do a whole new experience. I mean, or reboot it. You could yeah. reboot it. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, I want Mega Man. I hear you. I hear you. That would be really fascinating for me. What would be pie in the sky outside of Capcom? So like for Take Two, and I know that there's no reason for them to do this right now. But if somehow Rockstar were like, and here's a trailer for GTA 6, I would freak out. <laughs> yeah, it's I not. Would, it's, it's not. <laughs> I would totally again, freak they out. Because again, they would literally have their own like thing like carved out on a calendar. All right, yeah. everybody get ready for this day. Like, I know. Yeah. So it, they'd have to be really close to it being finished in order to do that, which I don't think sure. would be the case at all. But I do remember when they put out the image for Red Dead 2, and it was just the silhouette of the cowboys on top of the hill there, and it was like... And they said the reveal's coming, whatever that was, in October. And mm -hmm. So I think they revealed it exactly one year ahead of it releasing, is how, yeah. I think how it went. But that's anyway, cool. that would be pie in the sky. I know that's huge dreaming, and there's no way it's going to happen. But hey, I would love it. It would be amazing. Uh, okay, moving on. GameSpot's Play for All Showcase. This is where Derek needs to tune in. Derek, you need to hear me on this one. GameSpot, the editors, have handpicked more than 20 games that are created sure. by diverse teams that speak to important themes, create uplifting experiences, <laughs> and explore subject matter that's often missing from big budget titles. So make sure you're okay. tuning in. Transgender, transgender journey bullshit. <laughs> why, is, why do you got to bring journey into it? You know? I know. Every time. Why do you got to bring journey into it? <laughs> but Games, GameSpot, listen, to their credit, from a marketing perspective... I get it that they're trying to kind of set themselves apart as far as all these showcases go. They're not trying to do another IGN Expo and kick off mm -hmm. live and E3. So I get that they're taking a unique approach to that's it. Der that's Derek, sleepy baby. Uh, okay, all right, fair enough. Um, but to me, this kind of sounds in line with the Wholesome Direct where it's like just make you feel good or make you think type of games. Um, so that's going to happen on July 15th at 3.35 Pacific. But earlier that day at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, the, Nintendo is going to have their E3 2021 Direct. They're saying it's going to be about 40 minutes or so on upcoming Switch games that are mainly releasing this year. Hmm. And then they're going to have a three-hour or so Treehouse where they'll do some deep dives into some of those hmm. titles. Treehouse, them mentioning Treehouse, I think, is a big deal because usually it's like one big, huge game that they have at Treehouse and like there's like a huge impossible line to yeah. play that game. So, well, I think Treehouse is yeah. going to be Mario Golf and and uh, not Wind Waker, uh, Skyward Sword HD, and then I think it's going to okay. be Pokemon. So my my hopes aren't super high that we're going to get blown away by a huge list of brand new games that are all coming. I think they're going to double down on what's arriving and really try to dig into, in my opinion, Mario Golf, Skyward Sword, Pokemon, and maybe there'll be one other one. Maybe they're Maybe there is yep. some kind of surprise holiday release that we don't know about yet. Well, I, I, 
I don't think anything maybe this year, but maybe they go a little deeper in a Splatoon 3. And I think that's for that. next yeah. year. And they, they have announced it and everything, so I yeah. could see them showing a little bit more of that, maybe. I mean, it would be cool of them. I don't care about that franchise, but it would be a cool move if they somehow were like, and this game is dropping in August or, you know, something crazy. Yep. That is a very summertime feeling game. Um, I don't think that would happen, but... Who knows? No, I mean, it I'm, doesn't I'm look pretty like sure it's we only saw a little glimpse of it, right? A little teaser trailer. I think yeah. they said 2022 at the yeah, end. Yeah, and I, I think they did with they? that announcement. Okay. So I think so. I don't, I don't think it's coming this year. I think uh, pretty much we know what's coming this year from Nintendo, and they're going to probably stick to that. Some some things, though, that I, I really would like to see from them that could be maybe more of that uh, pie-in-the-sky surprises would be like uh, virtual console updates, you know, quit giving us crappy NES and SNES <laughs> games. Let's add some GBA or N64 games to the list. Um, or, you know, have some Switch uh, releases of like Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. You know, those things I think could be pretty cool, pretty easily done. They did it for um, Mario with the Mario 3D collection. So you never know. I, I'd like to see more of those games, you know, be re-released HD I agree. on Switch. I would love Wind Waker. Bring Wind Waker over. It's, it's... Oh, that would be, yeah. No, and I honestly, I, I still keep my Wii U hooked up, and it's just so I can go sail the season Wind Waker. Yeah. From time I love to time. that game. Yep. Um, and, I, you know, if, if Nintendo does surprise us with some re-releases, of, especially of some Zelda games, maybe it's some of the lesser uh heralded ones like your spirit tracks from ds and stuff like that if they figure out a way to make some of those I want, come I, over i want minish cap if they're going if they're yeah. going like uh some of the handheld ones that'd be a great or one the the least. most recent 3ds one was really great the linked um oh, link, link between link worlds between worlds yep listen um, you, you guys are playing it safe and it's real cute and i appreciate it but we gotta we gotta go crazy here all right all right we let's hear it crazy. nintendo needs to cut the crap and they need to they need to melt our faces off they do i, I need them to make equivalent of final fantasy 7 remake i need them to remake ocarina of time <laughs> and honestly they they I need where the, the full first blown... the first game yep. is just in hyrule forest right so <laughs> is... i i would be okay with that please uh do something like that, and that no that's the, the whole the thing most, that's the most disappointing thing with nintendo is they have these properties and things that they could do and they could just blow it away Dude, and how much why, money would why, they make how much why money would they utopia be happy yeah <laughs> i know why don't why don't they come back, you know, and and do these things? Um, you know, they're I'm sorry. They're spending Animal Met- Crossing money, and they don't have to do jack. And, and that is so fine. true. That is so true. But Metroid Trilogy, if they, you know, they they yeah. re-released that on the Wii U, I think, and redid all motion controls for all three of them. Yeah. Why? Just undo that. Give us regular motion controls for all why? Metroid prime games and yeah. re-release them on the switch but, you yeah. know how much money that would make and but, and everybody would shut up about metroid prime 4 for a minute but sure. ocarina of time remake would like oh. make, make them billions of dollars yes it, and it would <laughs> and, and honestly if there's one thing i could have from nintendo um the, it's probably the one game that they've made uh in in my lifetime of gaming that had the largest impact on me i would love an ocarina of time remake yeah hell yeah please hell yeah brother <laughs> all right so what i'm thinking if they wanted to really blow me away would be here's the next mario game like mario odyssey yes. like a mario 3D game. and yeah. breath of the wild 2 is on track for a holiday 2022 like just yep. show give me an idea of what to expect and I, I honestly think we're gonna see a little bit of breath of the wild 2 this Maybe. year they've shown Dude, a little bit of it it's always possible that that game is actually pretty close to being done and they've just stayed quiet about it it's possible mm. i just yes. don't think that's the case no, and uh, I, I don't think it is either, and I, I'm sure it's still probably a ways out. But March? I, right? What, what if it's March? Just like, what if they, or I guess it was end of February, or no, I forget when it was. It, it was, was March, March when Breath of the Wild came out, when the Switch released. Yeah. And it's so, so five years, five years yep. to the month. Um, so, I mean, it, it very well could be getting close. It could be a big thing. Just remember, though, when Breath of the Wild did come out, that was the only thing they showed at E3 that year. It was just Breath of the Wild. Well, and I honestly think dude, they're going to make... Dude, if they just show Breath of the Wild 2 well, and <laughs> anything else, we are and, all yeah. thrilled. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, yeah, and we would all be thrilled. And it doesn't I'm, matter. I, I would love it if they... 40 minutes of like... Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody would be happy. Um, but yeah, my expectations are in check. I expected a lot more from them at their last direct because we hadn't heard from them since 2019, uh, earlier this year when they did finally did a new direct. And I personally was quite underwhelmed. That's not to say they weren't doing anything, but I was just not 
thrilled about yeah. any of the things they were doing. It was like, oh my gosh, they 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 spoiled me from 2017 through most of 2019. Like all of 2017, all 2018, Nintendo was killing it. A good chunk of 2019, at least up through the summer with Fire Emblem, like I was just spoiled with all the Nintendo stuff. And then it started to slow down. And then of course, pandemic plays a role, but no one, no one else to my knowledge, no other companies have slowed down to what it feels like Nintendo has slowed down to me, the consumer. I understand they've made Animal Crossing. They're doing some Pokemon stuff, but I'm just kind of like, I'm waiting for like, I don't yep. care about No More Heroes 3. Give me, give me something else. Give me something to be excited about like you did with 2017, 2018. So I don't expect it though. I expect this to be a pretty modest showing, uh, doubling down on Skyward Sword, Mario Golf, Maybe there's another late summer, early fall release we'll hear about. You know, maybe it's a remake or a compilation. Maybe it is a Zelda Wind Waker. That'd be kind of cool. But I'd be surprised since we're getting Skyward Sword. I don't expect yep. Wind Waker. Yeah, and I don't think two Zelda re-releases are going to be announced at the same time. I think yep. they're going to let Skyward Sword come out and breathe a little bit. But are yep. you guys excited for Skyward Sword? Have you played it? No, I haven't played it. It's like the only Zelda that I haven't even tried. And, that being it, said, the way they described how they remapped the controls makes me very uninterested. Yep, and and I I'm I'm a little you know hesitant with how they remapped the controls. And it was you know, and I I'm a big Zelda fan. I play them all at release, play them to completion, hundred percent them. That was the one Zelda game in probably like fifteen years that I didn't pick up at, or I might have even picked it up at launch, but. Um, I did not play it. It took me probably two, three years after the Wii. I mean, the Wii U was basically dead by the time I put in Skyward Sword and decided, all right, now is the time to play it. And I absolutely hated the motion controls with how they mapped it to the sword. But the game itself, and it was very basic Zelda design with the dungeons, very light overworld. I did enjoy it, and I, I am happy it's coming to the Switch, and and I'm hoping even with the the remapping of the sword tilt controls, it's a little more enjoyable to play with. The last time motion. I played a game that tried to use the control sticks as your kind of weapon and shield was Too Human. Remember Too Human? Oh, jeez. I don't. And that game, that's the last one that I remember trying for a significant amount of time that used the analog sticks to kind of mm -hmm. control your weapons and i just i just didn't like it i thought it wasn't good i was like you know what i see what you're doing you're trying to make this realistic and all that stuff just let me hit a button mm -hmm. to swing my also sword. how do you do the camera if you, if the right stick is designated to weapons how do you rotate Lots, the camera there's, there's all kinds of workarounds could be motion controls could be a lock-on system there's all kinds yeah. of workarounds yeah. so um who, who knows it might end up being great that's fine that's fantastic i just my expectations are much more subdued with this Nintendo Direct than they were with the last one. Because again, last one, and I thought rightfully so, I let myself get hyped up because it had been so long and they were so quiet. And really all they had released was Animal Crossing and and uh, Hyrule Warriors, I think, had come out. And there wasn't there was, just wasn't much there. And then I was expecting a lot. Didn't get much, in my opinion. Uh, so my expectations are tempered this time, and I'd love to be surprised uh, with them. Bandai Namco is also going to be doing something on that day. We just don't know any details about what they're sharing or in what fashion they'll be sharing it. If they're teaming up with other companies or with Nintendo. Who, who Elden knows? Ring is Bandai Namco, right? Yes, I believe it is. Elden Ring! Um, and then they're going to have an E3 awards show where the editors mm -hmm. of IGN, GameSpot, PC Gamer, and Games Radar get to select the winners from what's been presented during the E3 showcases hosted so by... Alex Mendez, Jackie Jing, and Greg Miller. So, so, so basically, the transgender game of the show will get the highest <laughs> award. Listen, See, thank if, you for being the Derek when he's sleeping. Appreciate if, that. If yeah. bitch, if, yeah, bit, if, bit, if bitch boy Greg Miller handed me an award, I'd throw it back in his face. <laughs> Biden, twenty twenty four. Peace out. <laughs> what? Biden, twenty twenty four. Are you running for president? What? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. He's Derek, just gone. I love you, buddy, but I don't know. He's what, already gone. Just, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I know. But if he ever <laughs> listens to this, which he doesn't. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Anyway, um, so that's it for the E3 week. As far as we at least know right now, who knows if things might be added on or if some other companies, maybe even a Sony, will surprise us with a state of play. I don't think they will, but who knows. Uh, and then July 22nd. We do know that EA is going to have their EA Play on that day. Almost certainly focusing in on FIFA and Madden pretty heavily. Big whoop for that one. You know, Give me and, a and, Dead and, Space remaster. Hey, you know, what if EA surprises us with the 
Jedi Fallen Order sequel. Well, and that's what I'm hoping is uh, whatever Respawn, you know, Respawn's working on Jedi Fallen Order too. I'm pretty much certain of it. So show us a little bit of that. Give me a teaser. I want more more Respawn. Listen, if if they don't show me anything Dead Space, like I want a Dead Space 1 and 2 like collection remaster or or even remake the first one. Otherwise, get the hell out of here. Yeah, I want. No I was gonna say Dead Dead Space Two is still fun and creepy to play. Like, oh yeah, dude. De- oh. Dead Space One is like, it's claustrophobic. You yeah, go back, yeah. You go oh. back to older areas, but like it's even more decrepit, and like all the necromorph, like all the fleshy stuff on the walls are just getting worse, and it's 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 a terrifying game, yeah. dude. I, yeah. I really want a game like that again. Yes. So when I first put this list together uh, several days ago, there was a lot in the TBD list, but the ESA did just put out uh, all the details. So I was able to move almost all of them up into the kind of more defined days and times when they're sharing things like Nintendo and Square that weren't settled when I first made this list. But Sony's the only one kind of left on the TBD list. I don't know if we're going to hear anything else from Sony. Like we mentioned earlier, to their credit, there have been there's been a pretty steady trickle of news coming out from them. Everything from VR to the Horizon gameplay to, you know, the God of War delay, like a combination of good and bad, they're communicating. So it's not mm-hmm. like if if E3 comes and goes and, and Sony doesn't do anything special, I, I wouldn't be that surprised or necessarily disappointed. I think they've already been communicating. Um, but it is just kind of a bummer. Like I think back to the days of having the big three do their conferences and it's so fun. I loved yep. here's Microsoft's show. Here's PlayStation show and here's Nintendo and who won? You know, I I'm sorry. I know that's probably pretty petty and pretty silly, but <laughs> I just petty, I love it's it. Fun. No, it's and fun. It, and it's fun to debate it and yeah. kind of compare what each of them are doing. And they're all obviously doing a little bit different things, and and that is the fun of it. And yeah. it is a little sad when Sony just steps to the side anymore. And I and you know the last few years they haven't been a part of E3, but I still feel like they've done kind of this yeah. summer showcase whether you know last year it was later, it was after the fact, but that big PlayStation 5 event was, you know, a big wow, they showed a lot yeah. of cool things. I think that we're going to get something of that caliber this year. I they don't have know. It, you know, and I don't know if it's going to be in June, like shortly after, like my hope is that like, you know, June 15th, 16th, so, somewhere towards the tail end of E3 that they're putting out kind of this, uh, you know, whether it's a state of play or whatever, but just this PlayStation showcase and, yeah. and they're, yeah. they're bringing these big heavy things, these surprises. I mean, that year that we got Final Fantasy VII Remake and God of War announcements yeah. and, and Last of Us 2. I mean, it's just like, I want something like that where, you know, I don't care if it's two, yeah, three dude, years. When it wraps up, your adrenaline's pumping, yeah, right? Down the road, but when it's just banger after banger yeah. after banger, <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't matter, like, when these games are coming out. Just the fact that you're going, oh, my God, like, didn't expect this and yeah. then oh my god di- you know and then one after the other and sony is really good at doing that and nintendo yeah. did that uh i want to say it was right before or after the switch i think it was after the switch came out one of those e3s when they did like i want to say it was like fire emblem and by the way metroid prime 4 is in development like they yeah. had they, they just they yep. had a huge show and it, they showed you know, a ton of stuff. And, and even if you're just teasing those things, it's those those kind of surprise things, stuff you didn't expect. That's what gets me pumped about E3 is is yeah. not the leaks and rumors, it's that stuff that I didn't know. And yeah. and I I really liked it when Sony did it. They got the properties, they have the talent. Like you know, just just show us some of that. And and it might happen later in July, but I honestly feel that that we're gonna get this PlayStation presentation sometime this summer. Yeah, we need something because right. I mean, we technically don't really know of any huge Sony releases this fall, right? I, I mean, I, they I haven't thought, actually given we, dates. We got Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. I don't think uh, Deathloop is enough though. Yeah, but Kenna when Bridges was the last time that Sony put out a first party major first party fall game? I don't know, but I mean the PS5 is out now. They need something. I, I think Spider-Man <laughs> was probably the last fall game that they came okay. out with. That, that was, was September. September. Yep. That was 2019, you know, right? I, I was thinking about that. I don't think they've you I mean Nintendo almost every year has a November holiday game, right? They they're going even if it's a re-release, they'll do something. Here's your yep. Pokémon, here's your something, right? 3DS or Switch or they'll they'll, yeah. they'll make sure there's some new software that's sitting there shining on the shelves that your kids want for Christmas. Nintendo almost never misses that. Third yep. parties are usually there too, right? Ubisoft is pretty consistent. So most other ones have that too. I don't know that Sony or Xbox have ever 
prioritize Xbox, that. Xbox every, every more, fall has a, a Forza Horizon or Gears game, whether or Halo, you know, you right? They've done Halo or Halo, them. you know, and 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 they have, you know, that's yeah. always their their so it's fall just, holiday it's just releases. Sony really, that never has yeah. highlighted that. Actually, I would suggest that most of Sony's heavy hitters that we would consider classics. And sometimes they, they've all been like spring, summer, first releases. half of the year, right? Yeah, typically. Well, you know, La- Last of Us, Uncharted, God of War, they all released between Ghost March Shishima, and June, July. Yeah, Ghost of, yeah, you know, Five. and that that's typically like when some of their, you know, uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. I mean, yeah. that that's when we're getting the biggest games from them, and they don't typically hit very hard in that in the winter months. And now that you say that, I've never really noticed it, but yeah, like Spider-Man, that was a, a September game. That's really the last game I, I remember. Gran Turismo, maybe? They used to yeah. be releases, perhaps? I'm telling you, Final Fantasy 16 this fall. I'm calling it. Final it Fantasy 16 this fall. That's straining to that could December. Be. You know, PlayStation <laughs> yeah. might have enough third-party console exclusives between yep. Deathloop yeah. and maybe Final Fantasy, who knows? Um, so they, you know, if that's coming this year or not. Um, but anyway, they might have enough third party exclusives. They're they're okay with their first party. Yeah. That's why they didn't say anything about the Horizon release date. They and they even did put out a statement, by the way. We should have mentioned this that yep, right. you know, they didn't say anything because they're they're feeling good about twenty twenty one, but they want to make sure before they say that officially. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And honestly, if Horizon right. slipped to early part of twenty twenty two, no big deal. You know, um, you know, and that and that's with any game coming out recently. If it's gonna slip, let it come out they, when it's ready. I don't I want that game to be done correctly. Yep. I don't want a cyberpunk or, or something like that. I, I want the game to be finished, release it when it's done. It's gonna you know, I, I got plenty of play till we get there. It's not a I'll big deal. I'll still be playing Red Dead Two out here fishing. For, like, right, please. yeah. I mean you're, 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 you're still gonna have legendary hunts to complete. Me and so. Dan will still be building in Valheim every once in a while. It's still gonna be happening. Yeah, so. we yeah, we gotta repair our mountain, yeah. you know that the dragon structure. Right. You know, yeah. I, I think it'd be really cool and even if Microsoft did it or Nintendo, like, you know, there's not a a lot of big heavy hitter first party exclusives coming this fall we know halo's coming out whether that's going to be any good or not remains to be seen but does nintendo have a big holiday game other than you know a pokemon re-release um you know does playstation have anything does xbox have anything else we don't know i think if any of those companies came out with something that surprised us that's coming out this year that'd be really exciting to come yeah, out of this you're season. right i think if we look at Let's just include the whole summer. Let's just assume Sony will have a state of play, I don't know, late July, early August, let's just say. If we're going to come out of the summer looking back and saying who, quote unquote, won the big announcements, it's whoever can deliver something this holiday that we're not expecting. So if Nintendo can pull a Breath of the Wild 2 or Mario sequel or something crazy um, out of their pockets for the for the fall, or if Sony can deliver Horizon, or oh, if Xbox can deliver um, Halo, or or I know this is crazy. What if Starfield comes out this fall as an Xbox exclusive? That would be insanity. Yeah. Um, we forgot, or I almost forgot, the uh, rumored Donkey Kong game that the Mario team is supposedly working on. So oh, yeah. that, that, would, that would be crazy if that actually yeah. is legit. Like, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm 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 always hoping for something like that, something that you know. I mean, supposedly there there's games out there that could be releasing this year that we don't know about. A lot of times that turns out to be nothing really worthwhile or or super exciting. You know, and that's the fun of E3. You know, yeah. Let's see what happens. That is true. Well, there you go. There's our preview for E3, Summer Games Fest, and other general summer gaming shows. Um, who knows if we'll actually walk away in a couple weeks feeling amazing and, you know, <laughs> E3's back, or if we'll all be like, wow, that was a lot of time they made us sit and watch nothing. So who yeah, knows? We'll, we'll all feel like sleepy Derek Teagues, but also angry, you know, like just a mixture right. of sleepy and angry. So that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, but yeah, here's hoping it's a good one. I am curious to hear what you guys think. What are your predictions? So let us know in our Facebook group or in the comments on YouTube, wherever you're checking us out. I'm curious to hear what your predictions or your pie in the sky. We pretty much stuck with pie in the sky. I want this. I want Splinter Cell. I want Zelda. I want all the things. Now so, I just want pie. I just want some I just pie. Want, I just want some pie. It's well, pie. thank you guys for listening. Dan and Dan, thanks for taking time to chat tonight. I know it was a bit of a longer episode, but I really appreciate it. And thank you all for listening, tuning in, share with your friends, tell your mom. Have a good week. All the moms. <laughs>